Trying to build a good habit on top of a bad one is like fucking smoking a biff during a nice bath. So if you're trying to build this healthy eating habits, but then you're still going out partying, lad, then you're going to struggle, bro. In your mind, you know, as soon as you start negotiating in your head, bro, like thinking, ah, oh, fucking, I worked hard there yesterday, you might swear if this, or my legs hurt, and you start saying anything or whatever. Like, as soon as that negotiation starts to happen, lad, you've lost the battle. If you're angry with six losers, you'll be the seventh. I'm going with five athletes, you'll be the sixth. You're in the room with people who are proper high performing, bro, then you, chances are you're going to be a high performer. Welcome to Shake the Mic. Today, we're diving into the world of fitness with a special guest who's dedicated to helping others transform their lives through exercise and healthy habits. He brings a wealth of knowledge and passion to our discussion. Get ready to be inspired and empowered as we explore the keys to achieving your fitness and lifestyle goals with Shred Fast Instructor and personal trainer, Joseph Rubin. Joe, massive warm welcome to Shake the Mic. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me on, brother. Appreciate it. There is a version of yourself you haven't met yet. Keep showing up until you're introduced. Jim Quick. It's a fantastic statement. You shared it and it really struck a chord with me. It's very true. So, I think, for me, lad, from when I've when I've started doing what I'm doing, I've always had like a deep passion for like. But I'm going. I was going in at first year to be honest, lad. But like, That's what um, I want. like I've al- like I've always looked up to people like, you know, like you like your David Gogginses and like just people who like do, do constantly were talking about this type of person that like. Like the, he always says him, him in particular, he always says about when you get to your deathbed, there's gonna be some like someone's gonna give you like a just judgment day and like they're gonna they're gonna analyze and, and say all the things and like they're gonna have like a sheet and they're gonna be reading off all those things that you could have done with your life. Yeah, you could have been you could have been. And lad, that's my biggest fear in the world, lad, is getting to that day and that happening, whether that's real or not. And then knowing that I could have done more, bro, you know what I mean? Like, I think you that's wanted to exceed whatever yeah, the plans were, hundred percent, bro. Like tenfold, that I wanna, I wanna write that myself. Never mind that I've already been written, bro. Like that, that's the way I see it. You know what I mean? I heard him saying it when I was running one day, and um, I think he said like, "I want to shock God. I want him to be like, wow, we didn't, yeah. we didn't have, we didn't have you down as that. We had you like that, but that's we did, it, we didn't it. have it like that." Um, I won't be outworked by anyone. Where did you adopt that mindset from? Well, lad, you know what? It's funny this. So I was only sp- speaking about this yesterday to my girlfriend, and um, that can come across as arrogant. And I think it depends what way you look at it, because it's only arrogant if that makes you feel a particular way. So realistically, I'm only talking about myself. I'm saying that I believe that no one can work as hard as me. And like there might be someone out there that thinks the exact same, and I love that attitude. I actually respect people so much. You adopt that attitude, um, and the way like I say, you've got two types of people. You're either someone like, for example, like me. You'd look at someone who says something like that and think, yeah, he's a winner, and mate, like that. I'm not even talking about myself here because there's plenty of people out there that just like that have that attitude. Or you look at it the other way, saying, why does he think he's better than everyone? Why? 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 It's not always a competition and. Blah blah, all that, all that nonsense, lad. But like, I just think, me as a person, lad, I wholeheartedly believe that for me to be outworked, that I'd have to pass out or something, like I'd have to hit the deck, like that. That's the only time where I'd, I'd, I'd lose, lad. And I think that's any anyone who's ever done anything with their life, achieved great things, or look, athletes are a great example. They've always adopted that attitude that no one can outwork them. So I ain't about to start doing the opposite, lad. You know what I mean? I think it's a level of confidence more than a level of arrogance, isn't it? That, that's exactly what I said to me, get a friend. It's confidence by, seen by some, but arrogance seen by others. That's down to perspective on yeah. how they're looking at it, but it doesn't really matter about how they look at it. It's about how you see it. It's yeah. your view and it's your vision. And you know what you're you're capable of as well. Yeah. And to be fair, I think um, this is something I've touched on before, but confidence only comes from evidence. You'd have to do something to have confidence, otherwise you wouldn't have it in the first place. And you're working incredibly hard all the time. You're a goal getter, lad. I've seen that. So that, that's that. where your confidence is coming from. It's yeah. stemming from what you're doing and how you're living. Yeah. So yeah, I, think I can it, understand that. Yeah, I think it's just with me life, lad. Like um, in, in regards to like how I will, I will live. 
I can play t- I'll go into it a bit in, in, in a, a later, but I'm very big on affirmations. Um, Luke told me to um, dive into the affirmations side of, of my life. And like one of my affirmations from day one has always been, um, I'm confident, assured and strong in my everyday life. That's what I've always said, lad. I say it every morning and every night before I go to bed. That's just one of very, quite a few. But like, I wouldn't say, lad, I lacked confidence. I've never been not confident, but now, lad, I'm, I'd say I'm honestly, I'm thriving with confidence. And like, I'm just like, if, like a force field around me, lad, like, just, my hands bulletproof, Paul. I can't, I can't get into it, can't get in this zone, lad, you know what I mean? We're going to touch on it. We're going to touch on your mindset. Um, you've done a 4x4 four before be 48 challenge. That's four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So in conclusion, you done 48 miles in 48 hours. <laughs> right. So... Tell funny, me about that challenge, please. It's funny that, lad. So, basically, what happened, how that came about. So, I was in my bed with one of my mates. I was with Luke as well. And uh, with my mate, Ricky. And uh, we were talking about that challenge. And then I said, I reckon I could do that. And bear in mind, so you know, I'm very fit, but I'm not a runner. I don't ever run. I don't really go for runs. I wouldn't, I'd say I've been on two runs in the last six months, lad. Do you dislike running, Joe? No. I just, I've never really, gra- I, I want to do more of it, to be honest. I just haven't really gravitated towards it. Um, yeah. It's not something I hate. Not so, I, like, I like running in the, in the heat, to be honest with you. In the summer, I do more of it than I would in the winter. But, so, I went into this, saying this statement to Ricky that I think I could do that with no running in, like, the probably about se- seven or eight months. And then he went, lad, you're no, no chance you're doing that. I said, lad, this honestly, bro, you're saying that to the wrong guy here, you know. I said, like, I swear, like, I said, I said, yeah, I said, I'm that confident. I'll do it. I said, I'll run every single four-mile run in under 32 minutes. So, now again, that's just going to be numbers to some people. But, like, lad, it's not slow, that, bro, at No, all. it's a pace, lad. It's, it's a decent pace. mad after doing one after the other, after the other, after the other. It starts fatiguing, and it becomes a lot more difficult, yeah, to 100%. be able to keep them same same numbers. Um, it's like anything. If you if anyone knows anything about them who's watching, it's like your first mile like mightn't necessarily be the quickest because you might be getting warm. But the first couple of miles, you'll if you were having them in splits, that's where your fastest running will be. And then obviously over time, unless you're like a proper athlete or an Olympic runner or you're trained to run, over time naturally, gradually the times just drop off. They get longer and longer and longer exactly. as you start banging the miles out. And then you try and get an average pace over the course of that 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 run and go. Yeah, I was averaging seven minutes a mile or whatever it was. But obviously, if you were doing 32, 32, 32, it's consistency. Well, that's it's hard what, work. You know what? That's really funny. Just to expand on that a bit more. So. It was, the, the, it was obviously the the twelve four mile runs in total, and it was like a handshake bet, as in like he just didn't think I could do it, so I said I bet you I will. So then we had a bet, just man to man bet, and um, lads, I got faster every run. So I went from thirty two to thirty one and a half to thirty one to thirty eight and a half to thirty twenty nine and a half to twenty twenty nine. Sorry, and lads, it was just he was texting me going. Uh, do you want a bike here or something like that? And I, I was just went, lad, honestly, like, like one thing about me, that as well, like, I'm just big on me integrity and like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I couldn't live with myself if I lied about something, you know what I mean? So like. What it, does your word mean to you, Joe? Oh, lad, hollow words, lad, are no good to any man or woman. So like, I've, my word, lad, if I shake your hand on something, I'm saying when I do something, lad, best believe it's the truth, lad. I never fail, I fail, but even just like, just going back to what I was saying there about lying and stuff, hate lying, lads, I hate it. There's something about lying. I think intention's important because, like, there's lies people say daily and stuff like that. For example, like, if, like, I don't know, your mum comes down and says, do it look nice, and then you say, say she doesn't, and you say, yeah, that's a bit different, and I'm not condoning that because... No, but that's a, that, that's, that's a, it's a white lie. It's a lie exactly. that you're told to try and make, to make someone, someone so feel better than themselves. So that's where intention comes into play, lad. But in terms of my word as a person... I don't lie, it's not in my nature, I feel, and like when I was a kid, lad, I got, I got this advice from my dad, lad, you know, and um, it was like, it was about, um, it was like a watch, I was really young, it was about 17, I think, and I was going get to get a Rolex, but it was a black one, and um, I remember saying to him, if anyone asks, I'll just say, it was, it was real, and he went, uh, don't do that, lad, he said, why, well, he said, because then as soon as you lie, and someone finds out, Said every single word that you say, no one will ever ever believe again. 
Mm. I'm glad, honestly, that it sounds proper stupid, but it was one of the greatest advice I've ever been given, you know. The trust gone. Yeah, lad, I just, and now, now I live with that same ethos. Someone, I find someone lying about something so stupid, even sometimes, like, let's say you say you, you ran 5k and you never, I honestly had that question, everything that comes out of your mouth on yeah, that day, for, you know? Yeah, for, for, yeah. for the rest of the, For me, integrity is everything, like, integrity is doing the right thing when no one's watching. Yeah. And being true to yourself and being true to who you are. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you tell a lie to somebody, my belief is, you can kid the whole world oh, but you're lying to yourself yeah definitely and you know yourself when you go to bed at night that you, you weren't true to yourself and that shit keeps me up at night I've oh, got morals I am so I work hard and if it, if it was to set me stall out to do something for whatever reason I didn't I'd be straight with you I'd say Joe I didn't do it yeah I think you won't go far wrong living like that, bro, you know. No. It takes a bigger man to admit when they haven't done something. If you come up short, have. hold your hands up and say it how it is. Yeah, definitely, lads. Like, that's what, like, definitely me, one of me models, as you're saying, lad. Models are important, lad. <laughs> Physically, what was the challenge like? Oh, lad. Hardest thing I've done in my life, hands down. And it was, and when, and then when I had the conversation, even though I improved with the runs, lad, it was like, I really, really, really underestimated it. And it was solely down to the fact that I think that I hadn't done any running. At all. I just run one four mile run just to see how time I'd get before I'd done it. And just thought, well, yeah, Sean, I'll do this. And then, lads, I got to the point that sounds like mad because I feel like I've embodied. And people have done much harder things than this, by the way. So I'm not trying to make this sound to be. A, a At the time, time, it was hard for you, though, yeah. and that's all that matters. Well, lads, so I got to, got to the point where after about 12 miles out of the 48, so the third running, my foot was in agony. And what I had my tactic was, like, after the first mile, of pain, my foot had gone numb, and then I could run on it, but like, without missing, like, just ignoring the pain, lad. But like, it'd go numb, but that first mile, bro, I was limping. There's videos, my dad got me limping for the first run. Some people coming at me on the runs, as in, like, they come and ran yeah, with me. Ran with you, like, yeah, ran with you, yeah, yeah, just done like one stage with you. And lads, like, they, they asked them, lad, they'll stand on it, like, lad, I was limping for the first mile, bro, like, but still going fast, though, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you just weren't, yeah, weren't quite like it's, but then once once it got into my groove, lad, I managed to get past that, but then I'd come home. And then I had like the massage going on my calf. It was my calf. It was coming from my calf, so I had like a proper tightening in my calf, which was causing like a st- like a strain in my foot. And that I was in agony. That's the worst pain I've ever been in. It was like the most, like one definitely that put that hands down. The hardest thing I've ever done. Do you think it was your word that got you through? Because you'd said them words and you were a man of your word and you said I'm going to do it. It was the only thing that kept driving you to do it. Do you think yeah. that's where the drive came from to complete the challenge? Definitely, lad. Because I even said to myself like even if I don't like. I had every intention of hitting that time, lad, every single time. Now, if it got to the point where, like, I literally couldn't walk, lad, I'd have crawled it. Like, even if it meant I missed the time, bro, I was finishing that, like, 100%. And obviously, like, I didn't get to that point. Um, obviously, like, 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 I just, lad, I've just got to believe, like, I've got a massive, I've got a massive faith in God, me, lad, and I don't like to push religion on anyone or anyone in particular, but I'm talking about myself personally, lad. I pray every day, every morning, every night, and, like, when I was doing that challenge, I was just like, when I was the second day in, I was just praying, saying, give me, because I was saying, give me give me a blessing today to, to get me through the next one, just get me through the next one, to get me through the next one. I kept saying that, lad, and then, like, it got to the point where, like, I was just, I remember it was sun was shining, lad. What did I say to you before? I love running in the heat, lad. That's where my times got so quick, bro. Like, I was getting 29 minutes and that. And, like, I was just saying, like, I'd done a video after one, when I finished one, saying... I asked, I asked to God to give me strength today, and he, and he, he gave me it, lads. Sent you the blessing. Yeah, literally, bro. And then I just improved from there, really. What did that run do for you more than physically? Do you know the mental side of things? Did it reinforce your mentality oh, and reinforce lads. your faith? I've always, um, it's it talks cheap, lad, isn't it? So, like, so people can say that, like, they're this kind of guy, and, like, they, 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 I can do this, I can do that. And, lad, I've done some very difficult things in, in my life in terms of, like, training, and... When you go and follow through with some, it's it, what happens is, lad, no one cares about what you've done yesterday, bro. You know what I mean? Like, lad, that just goes out the window, lad. So, like, with, with like, that challenge in particular, I'd, like, I'd, a couple of months earlier, I'd done a burpee challenge. It was like 10,000 burpees in February. So, it was 358 a day on top of my normal training as a schedule. So, I was getting up at like 4 a.m. and doing them every morning. And, uh, straight or was you breaking it up? Straight, that. So, depends actually to like that. Sorry. Some days I was doing like, mad sets like 180 and 180 and then on other days I'd do sets of 30 until uh, sometimes it was taking half an hour sometimes it was taking 25 minutes so roughly about half an hour every time I was doing it 
But I'd done that challenge and that, that was one at, at that point that was probably the hardest thing I'd ever done. And then I'd done this running challenge and then I was thinking to myself, no one's bothered about what I'd done two months ago. So I like I'm gonna make a name for it for myself, not even so much for publicity, just in terms of like like I said, lad, I used to look up to these people, still do, like David Goggins and that. And like they're constantly striving for to do the next thing. Like, does what you do matter more to you than it does to me? Let me try and clarify that. Yeah, go on. I was going to ask you that then. <laughs> when you said you were doing it because you wanted to like sure to be that guy or create that person, not to anyone else or for publicity, for you. Yeah. Because you know who you are, don't you? I think, lad, you know what as well? I know who I am and it, it creates that validation and what you're saying, reinforcing it. But another thing, lad, is like I see myself as like, even if I'm not quite like there where I am right now, but like one day, lad, I want to be a role model for young men. Like that, that, that's 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 the person that I want to strive to be when I grow up. So like into it, into it, like because I'm I'm only twenty five now, so I'm not even I haven't even tapped into the type You're of man that I want to be. Exactly, bro. So it's a, I'd be naive to say that I've cracked it, like because I, I haven't by any means. But that type of person that I was looking up to, like that David Goggins, I was just in awe of him, lad. And like Luke's obviously another great example. That's why me and him became friends, which I'll expand on later. But. Um, I was just in order of like that type of guy you, you could just look at him and just think hey he's no, a geezer lad David no, Goggins is a geezer no matter what happens to him mate he's going to get up and he's going to keep going he uses the perfect analogy in Rocky in first Rocky round 14 it was the 15 round fight and Apollo Creed's fighting Rocky and he gets knocked down and he just he thinks he's knocked him out and then he gets up and he says in the video David Goggins it's 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 the face of Apollo Creed saying, because they, Rocky didn't win the fight. Mm. He said, he looked at him with to say, I just can't beat him. I wanted people to look at me like that, bro. Like that, that was what my, that's my goal in life. Like one of my goals, sorry, is for people to look up to me and be like, no matter what happens to him, mate, he's going to get up and going. keep going. That, you know what I mean? That's what I strive for. It's the one second moment, he says, I don't know whether you've ever heard him talk about them one second moments, but he's like, in that moment where you really, really, really want to quit, You've just got to hang in there for one more second, yeah. one more second, one more step. Because the second it's over and you quit, you've got to live with that oh, forever. That, 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 and that, that, that's going to eat you forever. It's, so it's, it, but it, we, all, we all start out with great intentions, don't we? Whether that be a challenge or something we, we, we aspire to do. But when it gets tough, when it gets really tough, and we've all been there, like you, you, you're thinking, your mind, your body, everything's just saying, just stop, lad. Just quit now, just yeah. swerve it, just swerve it. But if anyone's ever openly could say they have stopped, it feels horrible. Oh, lads. It I'm feels horrible and it, it's that. Would you rather live another 10 minutes in absolute agony or forever in regret? Because regret's the oh, worst lads. thing to possibly live with. Honestly, like that, that feeling, lads, like of, of not accomplishing something. Like, even though, lad, look, I, I can live with like failing. Failing's not the issue. It's knowing you could have done more, and you've chose the opposite op- opposite option. You've you've chose to cop out. So like lads, you can like people fail all the time. Lads, I've failed. I've done been doing sets in the gym with the kettlebells and I've failed, and that doesn't beat me up. That that's not the problem. It's the problem of knowing that I could have done it. I chose not to. Like because only you know that lads. No one, no yeah. no. If you, I could my mate appear to you to be like working to me axe moot limit, but I know like you said you can kid everyone else that, but you can't kid yourself. And that's when I was saying before. You matter to you more than you matter to me. Yeah. It's you really know the true you. So yeah. you know how hard you're working. Or I could be thinking, yeah, he, he doesn't really do much, but you're, you're, you're at your absolute limit. Or you could be, I could think you're killing yourself and you're not. Yeah. But you know the true you knows. Yeah, definitely, lad. And it's you who sits with it. Well, lad, you know what? Just, for, just on this topic, I just wanted to touch on it because we were only, um, only talking about this yesterday. So... We've got a very healthy competition in our gym, as in, like, we've talked on um, amongst everyone, but, like, me and this, like, called Harrison and um, and Lee as well. He's very competitive in a lot of ways, and they all are. But, like, I think me and Harrison and Lee were having a disagreement about who works the hardest in the gym. And, like, not even a case of, like, what happened was Harrison was convinced that it was him. And um, I just, and I wasn't even going to interject, but then I just, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to humble him. But I was just like, lads, you've got a long way to go, you know. <laughs> said, like, said, said yeah. like, I, I don't for one second dispute his work ethic. I think he's unbelievable work, hard worker. 
But I said, lad, I hands down believe it's me. I also think he's got the right attitude, by the way, because that's the attitude yeah, that you you've need. got. But um, just on that topic, I was saying, like, so the next day, I said, right, then, so we've done a workout. So yesterday it was, and um, I lifted significantly heavier than I normally lift, and so did he. And we've done, the exact other, same, li- we've done the exact same set. And we, I, lads, I said to him, what I want to see from you today is you near dying, lads. That's what I want to see. And there'll be people listening to this thinking, that's just stupid. Well, yeah, I, I might be to you, but there's a deeper reason there for me why I'm doing that. You know what I mean? Is it growth. Like, growth, lads, yeah. No one that I can tap into that when I need to. And I've done this set. And lads, if you to see me, it's on camera because we're on the recording that we've done. I had an aid that I had doing it properly, I swear to God, like I was, I was in an abs- and then at the end of the workout, Harrison just come up to me, and he knew, lad, he knew, he said, lad, I respect there today, and then, uh, then the point being I'm making by that is, I was living with that same, I wasn't saying I was a hard work, and then not following through with it, like I was just like, go ahead, Sans, I'll show you tomorrow, <laughs> said, you'll see, lad, you know what I mean, said, you'll see what I can do, you know what I mean, and he'd he done the exact same, he worked really hard, lad. You bring each other on. Yeah, and lad, it's, and like, people can look at that the wrong way again, and think it's like, so trying to be better than each other, it's, it, it is, but not in the bad sense, lad, like, that can only make you improve. I'm going to touch on that later, with you in the podcast, about your circles and stuff like that, yeah. go there with it. Who was Joseph Rugen before Shred Fast? Right, so... Um, this is what I was saying to you before. Was now about like, I, I, like, obviously, like I've got my social media platform and it's mainly honing in on like training and like mindset and all that and like things like that. But with with me as a person, so my background, I'm trying to say for a start, like I've had a very privileged life. Like I haven't, I, I've had hard times. I like anyone, you know what I mean. But I wouldn't sit here and lie to you and say like I grew up with nothing and like. Oh, that's not me. That's like, like I've, I've got a good family. Mum and dad still together. Like grew up in a family home. Got three older sisters. Um, dad taught me good values. Um, my mum's worships the, the feet that I walk around that I walk on. Um, youngest boy, you know what I mean. So I was a three, I was a four, and um, I to sit here and say that I've had all this hardship. But that just isn't. I've had, I've had hard things happen to me in life, but it was later in life. So as as I've grown up, I've had good values. I've, I haven't really really truly understood like what what hard things were like when when people go through adversity. So like for me, when I reached how old was I? It was twenty twenty. So I was twenty one. Um something happened personally in my life with my family. And uh, it just like got turned upside down that to be honest. And um yeah so I it it, it sort of that's when I started Shred Fast and like it's just oh, everything happened for a reason, lad. Really, it's mad, isn't it? So like, like when I like time and perfect for things and stuff like that, I started to drive fast, and then I, I started to see like obviously all these had bad things that happened to me. I didn't know how to deal with it, so like I was just going out still, and like I was trying to avoid the problem rather than like addressing it. Um, when you say you were going out with your party, yeah, party and every week, lads, going and because we were in lockdown, going out was so easy, as in like. I didn't have to be in work. I used to work for Barclays, you see. Um, so me expand on that should really said. So I used to work in Barclays as a, as a supplier manager and a finance analyst. So a completely different job to what I'm doing now. And I was good at it. That's I had a good job for my age. I was I think I got the job when I was just eighteen, managed to get a promotion internally, and I was earning good money that for my age. Um, and I started I was wasn't I wasn't unhappy. But I wasn't happy, you know what I mean? I didn't say, I wouldn't say I enjoyed going to work every day. You weren't fulfilled. Yeah, definitely. And like, I'd always said, from like, like I get my family can stand on this, like my dad and my sisters and stuff like that. I always said since I was a kid, lad, I was going to do great things with my life. I just didn't know what it was. And then like I said, like I've always said, like people, it, it, it's not even so much that I want to earn loads of money or anything like that. I think money allows, buys you freedom. Freedom to do the things that you want to do. And what my goal is now, which I understand, is to help people, um, and and like if I can, and, and money is a, a massive a massive element of that because it gives you the freedom to be able to do things every day to, to help people. You know what I mean? Um, so going back to what I was saying there, so as I was still working for the bank, and um, I, I I was like, I wouldn't say I was I, I was I was to a degree actually. Yeah, I was weak minded. Lot if things were I didn't like something, I wouldn't do it, and like if, like. Dad always makes a joke with me, like, because when I was a kid, I used to play footy. I used to moan about my feet being freezing. 
I mean, like, you'd have to, like, rub my feet before a game and stuff like that. It was sound like a, like a divvy, but I'll openly admit it, lad, you know what I mean? And, and now, like, to the person I was then to now, lad, think night and day. I was raised differently to my kids are now, and I feel a little bit too comfortable. So I try and make things a bit adverse for them sometimes. And, like, I think Carmen, my girl's a bit, like, she understands it. She understands why we're doing it, but, like, my eldest lad, Jared, he's like... What are you doing this How for? He's ten now. Yeah. And it's like you know, like I feel like as they grow, like my youngest lad, he's just turned five, I'm just letting him be. But Ruben's seven and like stands on like he plays football when he's on the sideline, he's like, Oh, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm like run up and down, lad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You won't be cold. Yeah. And like I'm trying to teach them like ethics and stuff like that, but like with balance, it's and it's difficult and like Jared's going to senior school um, the end of this year and it's he's got to be ready for that and he's got to be ready for life and what it's going to throw at him but sometimes you can be too comfortable yeah. and it's trying to get that balance of not being too comfortable because if, we, if we're all creatures of comfort we're all creatures of praise and we want to be there but growth happens in discomfort That's it, not right. in comfort so you've got to learn to try and have that balance Back to what you were saying. I think uh, just going on what you were saying there, there's, there's, a, there's a crisis in the world, lad. The comfort crisis, bro. Like that's what I call it. Is it like people just they're comfortable doing what they're doing every day, and like, like this is so people know. I'm not speaking from a high horse position here, as in like I'm speaking from someone who's been there, being in that situation when I was just like every like I, I wouldn't do things I didn't want to do. Anything that was a bit like out of me comfort zone, I'd be like, ah, oh, you asked with that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just wasn't that type of person. So when I'm saying these things, it's not because I think I'm better than people. It's because I've been there. You know what I mean? Speaking like, from experience. Yeah, yeah. And like some of the stuff, it's like cliche to say, but the reason why cliches are the thing is because it happens around the world all the time. You know what I mean? That's why they become... The facts. Things. Yeah, the facts, bro. Um, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, um, I've instilled a lot of... Like in terms of my upbringing, me dad, there's two men that have in my life, lads, that have had a profound uh, effect on my life. And it's my dad and Luke. And um, my dad, going into, going into specifically about my dad, he's always taught me good morals, good values. And um, like, for example, like when I'm saying I haven't had a um, hard life, like as I used to go, must, must have been to Florida 11 times by the time I was like 12 or something like that. I used to go every year. Been to like New York, Miami when I was a kid, all different places, cruises, all that. And that can be conceived as being um, someone who's spoiled, like a spoiled kid. Now, one thing I'd say is the reason why I've never been spoiled is because my dad wouldn't, wasn't the type of person. He'd take us on to nice places so we could experience the places to go to, but he'd never buy me something. If I was to say, I want that game, he'd never buy me. He'd say, You want it? You can earn it. So we used to have me grafting in the garden with him, like doing digging or whatever it was or whatever housework he needed doing. He maybe like used to, we uh, always joke about it now. When I was a kid, lad, I wanted him to buy me FIFA. I was about 14 or 13 or something. Obviously, lad, I didn't have no money. So he was just like, he said, if you want FIFA, you can help me flag in the garden for three weeks. Three <laughs> weeks worth of work, bro, for 40 quid. Yeah, so lad, that's how much the game was at the time. And like, it made me appreciate the value of money so much, lad. And like, this is what I'm saying, like, He's, he's even though I went to nice places and I grew up in a nice house and stuff like that, it was he taught me, yeah, you want things like you're gonna work for it. You know what I mean? My dad was the same with me. I had a car wash and made me work there every weekend. I remember I wanted a pair of rockport boots. This is going back, lad. And if you had a pair of rockport, you're a bad man. You're the boy, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I really wanted a pair proper bad. And I think at the time they were, they were expensive. They were about 150 quid or something like that. And like I never had none. And some of my mates did. And my dad was like, if you want them boots, you're going to have to work for them. So, like, you're going to have to come and help me every weekend. And, lad, I remember I worked every weekend up to the Christmas from about the October for these boots, yeah. The garage was opposite Derby Lane Gym. That's where it was, yeah. And I remember going there every Saturday and it was cold because it was the winter months. Yeah. And I'd be helping them. That's that, lad. I can't imagine it now. And we got, we got to the Christmas time and we went to Wade Smith when Wade Smith was still open. And I got these boots, lad. And I never wanted the Christmas holidays to be finished so quick because I just wanted to put them on to go back to school. <laughs> Quality back, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm on it. So I know, I know what you're saying when there's that, that work ethic involved in getting something and that's what I try and stand and install into my, my kids now when, when they're coming of age. Um, 
just on that, I just wanted to say as well. So like, you know, we was talking about the question you asked me previously about saying I won't be at work by anyone. Mm. Oh, that's obviously a lot of the time in context of like training. But genuinely, glad I wholeheartedly stand on, and anyone who works in my gym will agree with me, lads. I think at least I um, stand on it. Just the fact, lad, I'm the hardest working person in terms of like my job. Like, lad, to start, I get up at three thirty every morning, and I start work at five. I work till seven at night every single day. We're gonna come to it. We're gonna touch on it because yeah. I want to. I want to get you there in the right way. Luke Paul, can you put into words the influence and impact Luke Paul has had on your life? It's gonna. It's, gonna, it's hard to put it in, into a small, small. Uh, that's, I'm gonna struggle, but I'm, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, For anyone who doesn't know, who's watching this. A lot of people do know who he is. Luke Paul is the owner and founder of Steadfast. Very close friends with Joe. He's a role model and an inspiration to so many people. And he's changed so many perspectives and outlooks while building an online fitness platform for the ages. Luke Paul's a Don, isn't he? Well, lad, he's the boy, lad. Tell us about Luke. So, just to give you a bit of background, how we met. So, I was... I followed Luke for years and I didn't know him. And he was got a few people, lad, I know, into shape. And... Um, I remember he, he he brought out this program, so it was in it was in uh, the end start of twenty twenty, just before COVID. Was you athletic at the time, Joe? Was you working out and stuff nah, like that? I'd go to the gym three times a week. Didn't know what I was doing, so like I wasn't like just go do arms every single time I go in. Lads didn't honestly like I didn't have a clue. What a strategy to that. So I wanted, I think for a lot of things, lads, like like a, lot, a bit of naivety really. I went in wanting aesthetically a better body, wanted to look better. Like I think that at the time was when he. I think I was just turned 21 and I just wanted to be in better shape. That's why a lot of lads start up women as well. They just want to look better, better, better shape. Wasn't even really overly concerned over my health or anything. It was just more so all like mindset and really understand anything that at the time. You just wanted to look just good. Look better, lad. That was how it started. That's how it starts a lot of the time, lad. Um, and then it's how it then goes on, how it changes. Um, so as I was, I was following this program, I was enjoying it. Hard, hard. I was probably one of the people we talk about. I think I was one of the first people to sign up to it, lads, to be honest. I was with the people who did. And um, a couple of months later, I seen him at um, my cousin's wedding. Uh, and his, his, his girlfriend's related to my cousin. Is this the first time you'd ever set, set eyes on Luke Paul yeah. in person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said to my sister, there's that lad whose programme I've been doing. And she was like, oh, is it? And then just didn't speak to him. And then I crossed paths with him when we were going to the toilet. I said, lad, I've been doing your programs at Belter. Um, I said, enjoying it. And then he just got chatting for five, ten minutes. Lad, then not really. And then just gave me his number and then didn't speak to him for like a year. And then, but I'd still been following the program though. And it, it, it was evolving each time I was, I was doing it without that within that year. And then he put on his social media, anyone who's been following the program a while, and he sent your transformation pictures in. So I've sent mine in. And he said that he was impressed with them and he put them on his own social media. So then I said to him, lad, can I come in and train with you? I'd love to. I said, like, he was like, yeah. So I've come in. He said, you can do the live recordings because he had basically, so anyone who doesn't know, we used to have a team of people. Like, he'd bring people in to do the recordings and he'd take us through it. He didn't used to do it with us, you see. Um, so come in. It's been three, three, these three birds there doing, about to do the workout on the same weight as mate on 10s. And I'm thinking, yeah. where the boat was it? It was in an Aintree in, um, in the last old Shred Fast Belt Wellbeing Centre. Um, in the first gym, Luke Holmes. And f- Where was that based? That was, about, was it, it was by the Jacobs factory, uh, just off Long Lane. Yeah. Um, and he said, it's these, there's these three girls there. And I thought to myself, yeah, I want to blitz these here. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> proper, <laughs> proper arrogant lad. Naive. Idiot lad. And honest to God, I got yeah. leathered. I got leathered by all three of them. I was thinking, oh my God. Like, I you, I, there's a bit, you all me going to the toilet. Luke goes, you want to be sick? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I wasn't, but it looked like I was, do you yeah. know what I mean? And, I, and then I thought to myself, oh, I've just been leathered by three birds there. Proper sex as well, by the way. I'm not trying to be, just mean like <laughs> proper. And it just made me respect them so much, though, you know? And yeah. like, um, but then going back to why. So anyway, after that session, I said to Luke, lad, is there any way I can come in and do this twice a week? Or, or once a week, whatever, I'll take whatever I can get off you, lad. And he was like, yeah, yeah go ahead, lad. And I was paying him to come in because I wanted to that much. I was like, lad, I'll pay you, do you know what I mean? Because I was getting a boss workout in and I was working harder there than I was at home and stuff like that. And then after a while, lad, after doing it for a couple of months, I was lying to my old job, saying I had to drop my nephew off at school so I could come in for nine and train with him. And then I'd shoot on with my laptop connected to my hotspot so I was moving my mouse so that they thought I was still working and stuff like that. And... Um, and then I used to come in with this black book, lad. 
and I had loads of ideas for Luke, innit? And like, <laughs> and I was just, lad, that's how, like, 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 how much I was like. Do you know what first, Joe, do you think he thought? Lad, I'll tell you what he thought, like, you know what you're going to say? He's thinking, who the fuck's this kid, lad? I think he's kind of telling me how to run my business, you know what I mean? We laugh about it now, lad, because like, I was so set on, like, helping him. I was like, hey, lad, have you thought about this? Hey, have you thought about this? And I was making all stuff on, like, just on, like, um, what's it called, uh, like PDFs and stuff mm. like that, to have ideas for him, and saying, lad, do you, you want to try this? And he was, I think at the time, but I was that persistent, lad. He eventually, like, he, he, he at first, you think he was taken him. back? Yeah, he, was, he, 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 he just said it to me. He said, like, lad, I was thinking to myself, who's this kid, lad? Like, he's just like, he's like, he's like what the hell, lad, who are you? You know what I mean? Like, was he was he a tough nut to crack, Joe, yeah. in the oh, sense lad, of, like... He's got a very tight-knit circle, and, like, to, to, to not... Lad, this, by the way, when I'm saying this, he doesn't think he's better than anyone, but he, he keeps his, his close friends close, lad, and, like, to... to, to so and get into that, that circle is very difficult. Hard, lad, hard, like I'm telling my through experience, you know what I mean? And eventually, he, 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 he became, I said, after persistent and persistent, I said, I got him to go for some food with me and he uh, went for a walk after it. See, for uh, you, was that a massive win? Yeah, lads, because I was just thinking, I remember seeing all this, lad, yeah. Like in Luke's programme, he was teaching about like affirmations and stuff like that from the day one. And like, and I was doing the affirmations and stuff. But for your own reason, for yeah. different reasons to what he was teaching you for. Yeah. You I wanted to be a part of what he was lad, doing. Exactly. So you were using what he was teaching His you. His method against <laughs> them, <laughs> lad, against essentially, lad. So I was, I was saying, like, I used to say to his lad, I honestly couldn't give a fuck if people think I'm a fucking ming or what. But I used to, lad, I was, I, I've always said to Luke, I've, I bought into him as a person, lad. Like the type of person he was, he was helping people. He's a, he's a good man, lad, you know what I mean? And I wanted to be friends with him. Started off with just wanting to be friends with him, lad, because I thought you are inspired and you, yeah, you like them. Proper, lad. And like, it then, that I remember saying to me, Dad, watch, I'm going to be best mate to him. I didn't even know him very well, lad. Did you, did you think, do you think Luke felt the same way about you at first or no, not? No, definitely not. No, he was, he, 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 he. I think as time went on, that's only progressed. Do you reckon that was an oversight on his behalf? Not an oversight, lad. I think it's um, many people come into your life and not all of them. Because of the type of person Luke is, he's got a persona about him. Not persona, sorry, um, like an ambience about him where like people want to be friends with him, lad. So he's got a lot of that yeah, happening so, all the time. So you've got, to, you've got to really like... Have a filter. Yeah, man, exactly. So like, I, I took no offence to that, you know what I mean? If that's, if that was, if, if, if that's how it panned out, because it did. And then over time... I think he's big on intentions and like how, how, how what what I used to think he can see right through people, lad. To be honest with you, um, so it's hard to give for him to give you the time of day unless he's really analysed you and thought, yeah, you know what, he's genuine and what he's not. And um, persistence is key, though, isn't it? And and just turning know. up, turning up. Like we always say, like if you're not on under doors, one will open. Yeah. You've just got to keep going. You've just yeah. got to keep knocking. Lads. You've got to keep grinding. Look, lad, this is a saying as well. Very similar to that. One uh, percent of something is better than hundred percent of nothing. You know what I mean? So like that that's what I live my life with. Lad. If, it, if 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 you get one percent out of you, but you get a hundred percent out, you get hundred percent out of nothing, don't you? So mm. like if you don't do anything, so that that's the way I see my life. And I was just I was just on them all the time, and then we went for this walk, lad, and then. Where was the scram? We went for so salsa, lad, you know, and Luke's bed, uh, like a health freak, lad. <laughs> that's and, like, what I'm just lad, asking, I'm pitching, lad, lad, I want all the feels. We laugh about it because he was like, because he'd never been, and I said to him, um, we go over this scram and so salsa, lad, and um, he, he went, got there, and he didn't know, he didn't ask me at the time, he went, is this healthy, lad, yeah? And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, and then, lad, it's not, though, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, um, but like, he's one of them, he's like me, lad, once he commits to something, he's like, all right, so I'm not eating out here, then I'm not eating out here. Fuck you know yeah, 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 we'll just have it. Yeah, we'll just have it as a one-off. So we went for this guy, and then went for a walk to walk her off, and then, I remember coming home from the good chat, great, I had a good chat with him, and I come saying to me, dad, oh, dad, look, I'm, I'm promise you, like, I'm going to be involved in this somehow, like, I just, I just want to be involved in it, like, I'm telling you, it's going to happen gonna happen and he got love me dad like because he's just being a parent at the end of the day he was like he said to me um do you think he said at home because he was he was not he was deterring me a little bit but from a good place like he i had a very good job lot for me yeah, that, i had yeah. health benefits i had private health care i had sick pay holiday pay yeah he's like listen son is this gonna save yeah. you you know you're knocking now with it's, some lad at the back of yeah, the car factory yeah, you know what i mean because he's got a body of a god and yeah. he's working out all yeah. day it doesn't mean that this is right for and, you and you're gonna make money doing it and like he yeah. just my dad's even to this only just now really last few years the idea of someone 
paying someone to get into shape, lad. He just couldn't grasp that concept, lad. It was just completely alien to him. Do you know what I mean? So for me to say that I wanted to be involved and do that as a, like potentially as a job, he was just like, I don't think that's a good idea, you know, lad. And, and, I, and I love him for it because he's looking out for me. But I just said to him, see all those things that you're saying, dad, like about like having like good wage, health benefits, blah, blah, blah. I said, you know all that. None of it makes me happy though. Do you respect you for that? Because like this is something that I'm big on. Like I've lived my life by this. That's where like where how I am, where I am today. Yeah. Like I've done what I love, I've done what I like, and I've took risks. So like when I had a family, I started a business and no one believed in it. And I stuck it. Yeah. And stuck it and stuck it and stuck yeah, it. Yeah. And there was times where people were around me saying to me, Don't do it all. Jack Swerve, yeah. like, look, you could be making more money doing something else. But I didn't want to do nothing else. And I knew what I wanted to do. Like and I had a vision. Yeah. And I knew where I was going to get it. And that was 10 years ago. And I'm not finished. I'm nowhere near finished. I'm still only getting started. But I'm, I'm further than they imagined it would have went. Uh, yeah. Some people. And... I'm sort of on the cusp of where I wanted to be back then. And it's just taking time. But the model of what I'm trying to say is sometimes people look at like I know um, what you're saying, bro. security uh, in, in a job. And yeah, you're just going to be that. You're gonna, fear. It's fear. And it's gonna, you're going to be that forever. Or some people want um, the name, the title to say, oh, I'm a teacher. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. But, but you're fucking be happy being a teacher, you're though. miserable, though. Yeah, you're a miserable that's teacher. That, that, Do you know what I mean? Block, like, I swear, like, like, that's so too, that, that. Yeah, go, like, go, go and be a fucking bin man, do it yourself and be happy. Yeah, and be you can make money out of, out of so many things. Like, people think that job title would only take you that far financially. No, it won't. It's how far you want to take, take it. it. Uh, will yeah. take you where you, you want to go. You make the path, lad, don't you? 100%. Yeah, don't you mean? People, oh, I'm a gardener. Something hasn't been done before. Fucking be a gardener and yeah. you'd be a millionaire. Yeah. Whose gardens are you doing? I know, I know. <laughs> Two, lad. Simon oh. Carl's or Tony's around yeah. the corner. <laughs> and it's it, there's levels to everything, but it's how hard you want to work. But you know what I was going to say there, though, lad, just about what you were saying? Like, and this is this is not me giving advice to you here, yeah, but I think it's something that I've took from myself and what other people have told me. I'm an open book, <clears> I'm all ears. But like when you've got people, sometimes that like, you know your plans, bro. Keep them to yourself. Listen, because I've seen some Luke say will something. Deter you from doing the things that you want to do. My missus would say to someone who I knew, "Oh, he's gonna do this." <sighs> I'd look at it. I'll tell her, "Don't tell anybody what my intentions are." Because yeah. if you've got intentions, this is this is a message to people who are watching this. If you've got true intentions, keep your true intentions to yourself. Don't share them with anyone but yourself until you've achieved it. Because I believe external can sway what you're doing. Yeah. And it can it can sway your um I believe there's energy, you know, that holds in it, lads. Like 100%. you know, you know if you like if you like there's a saying, lads, as well, when you're winning, don't tell no one. Because as soon as you then voice that thing, it, it got it, it loses its power, lad. And the same thing in terms of your aspirations. So like like when like that's why like when you look at children, lad, yeah. They're a perfect example of it because when you tell a when the kids have got these like they say like I got like like a five year old or something, my sister she wants to be a marine biologist. And like imagine like an adult saying, you're not gonna be one of them, you know what I mean? Like as soon as like all you're setting them up to think is that they're not gonna be able to achieve you know, something that they can that they, that they actually can do, you know what I mean? So children are a great way to look at it, lad. And then that then transpires into your adult life. Know what I mean? when you it's get exciting to, when you've got a plan as well, yeah. and you and, and you know and it, and you're nurtured, on it, and you're yeah. nurturing it. When you don't tell no one, no, it like it, it holds a certain like energy. It's a feeling inside you where you're excited with yourself, where you're like, I can't fucking wait to yeah. do this, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's a boss feeling, and and that feeling you can ride out on that feeling, and it keeps you going. It motivates you when, yeah, yeah. even when you don't feel like it, you've still got that there. You've still got that belief, and touching on what you were saying there, Junior Thompson said recently, like. How many kids you say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Say, oh, I'll be a taxi driver. <laughs> no one wants know. to fucking set out to <laughs> do that. No. Do you know what I mean? It's that they've probably had big dreams and big aspirations and goals, but that many people have just sat there and went, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do yeah. that. You can't. And they just dilute you and dilute it till, till you, you yeah. become believing that you can't, you can't do what well, you set out to do. She see that, oh, like, there's a book I've just read recently called um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's book. Brilliant, lad. I can't remember the actual name of it, but it's like a it's book based off his life. And um, it says the population, 80% of the population sways towards negative bias, meaning that they'll always think of the worst situation rather than the better one. 
Mm. So the people will tell you why you can't do something rather than you can. There's a percentage that will tell you that you can, but a lot of people will tell you why you can't. So if you if you understand that concept and, and take it in, you, you then realise that, like, again, going back to what I'm saying, just don't voice all the things you're planning on doing to people that like, because some, some you might have big dreams, lads, and, and some people don't think as big as you. So to say that to them, it'll make them feel like shit. So then they don't want to then say to you, like, uh, they, they, they'll, they'll then, sorry, try and project, project the fact that, they, that, they, that's that adventurous that it won't happen you know what I mean yeah because so that's because at their own ends people with big dreams and big plans themselves are on board with it like they're yeah. like yeah you, you'd you smash that you can do yeah. that but it's the people who haven't they're the people who usually it's find it's the majority of people though that's the issue so that's the majority of people but you know for winners it should be easier because there's not that much competition you know no, no, you know what I mean because they don't people, there's a lot of people that yeah. don't want to work that, that hard that, that, you know, do you know what I mean so if you that. are a winner Guess what? We've got an easy path because there shouldn't be that many people working. That many loo- people losing. Imagine like if everyone had the same way. You know the way you say, like I won't be out work. Yeah. Imagine if everybody fought like that job. It'd be that much harder. Yeah. You, you, no, that's the fast job you've got. People would have been queuing round the block for that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's why but they don't want to work that hard, lad. Yeah. That's why you're where you are because yeah. you've got the work ethic to get where you're going. Yeah. Um, I think that all that what you're saying like there's another another book um, I read you bet me on this one um, it was a uh, it's it's called uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill and it talks about Napoleon Hill oh lads great honestly lads I'd say if anyone's going to read it or listen to it listen to it it's better because it's like a conversation between Napoleon and the devil and he tells you the devil about it whether you believe in religion, religion or not he tells you about how he controls people and like, see these people that I'm talking about that have these negative bias, they cause them drifters, they just drift them through life. There's no goal, aimlessly, no goals, no aspirations, no work ethic, nothing. And he tells you all the ways that he digs his claws in and keeps control of people. That honestly, it's a phenomenal. It's on my list now. That's on my list. I definitely to that. I definitely had your love. I believe you. You've got no goals. I believe you just exist, and I don't believe you're living. I can't. I, I. 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 I couldn't get up without a goal. Like I, need, I need to have goals we'll touch on that a little bit later as well um, I know you love a good read what are you reading at the moment? at the moment lads I'm a brilliant book lads to be honest called The Psychology of Money and um, it's not what you think so it's it's about money but it's not it's about your understanding of it so people probably read this into that and think it's about like numbers and stuff like that and like uh, but it's not it, it's actually very like it's like a story almost it's like 20 chapters very short chapters and it just educates you on, on like money about like how, how we perceive things and like, um, because a lot of my this that this is probably a bit of an off-topic book. So what my normal reads would be was usually about like self-development and things like that. Um, poor, that. Yeah, all that type of stuff. But this is more so about like, so I'll give you a quick example out of the book. It talks about um, um, like when depending on when you were born and where you're born, where you're born will dictate your whole concept of money. So Perception. if you live in America, there's been so however many recessions in the last 20 years or something like that. So you got to, it's a constant theme of a recession. If you're born in Australia in a certain time of year, recessions, haven't, there, never, there hasn't been one in however many years, for example. Don't know the facts on that, by the way. I've just given that an idea. The same thing with like stocks. If you were to invest in stocks at a certain, at, um, in the 90s when stocks were booming, you'd have an idea that stocks are the ones to, to invest your money in. If you were to invest in stocks in 2008, you'd think that's a bad <laughs> shout, lad, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, when you're born, and it changes your old thoughts on, on like, how you're educated on money and stuff like that, because they, like, at schools and that, they teach you everything but the key skills to life, lads. Money can work for us, can't it? Yeah, 100%, bro. Like, that's a bad thing about the education system, lad. They don't prepare you for life at all. You prepare you out to all your skill, like English, math, science, and like, I haven't. I honestly like I'm not saying like I'm criticizing because I feel like the te- it's not necessarily the teacher's fault. I think like they don't teach it on what it takes to your health, really. PE, and that's they just used to go for play footy and stuff like that, and PE or do sports that didn't really educate you on your health very well. The um, in terms of like your your maths, like English, maths, and science, obviously very important, but like all the stuff like art and stuff like that, and like. Why aren't they teaching you about like mortgages and credit and stuff like that? They're like teaching then? you what they want to teach you to set you up for a certain system that's being designed, yeah. is my belief, way, and to I keep agree. you in, in way, line. Way you know what I mean? Yeah. They, cause we, Console. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, we can't all be you or, or, or me. 
this is the issue yeah. because if everybody was to yeah. be a problem they yeah. need somebody's got to clean the floor lad and somebody's yeah, got to yeah, yeah, yeah. wash right. the dishes and i'm not saying i won't clean the floor or wash the dishes but i've got dreams and goals and i'll do that along the way to where i'm going but yeah. they, they they need drifters yeah well i see and that's why the system's set up in that's why i've got such a bit way. of a like a, 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 a spark towards it a little bit lad, because i when I was when I was younger, I I I because I, I started, when I started in the bank, I used to see people with proper heavy debt, had debt, all that in the bank. You know what I mean? Like when they bring it up, and I was just started on the phones for six months, and then I got a promotion. And I used to used to ring up lads, and they'd be like people in proper heavy situations, and I think to myself, hey, why did people not learn teachers this in school? Lad? I used to watch people throw their life away, lads, in debt, and like I used to think. I was why was I not I learned so much from that. I didn't get myself in that situation because of it, do you know what I mean? They need people in that lad, and no, that's why the control. system's being created like that, yeah, to control. keep everyone where it's they're going and stuff. And near the you know, the clever people who leave school, there's like there's like different groups of people. So the ones who aren't as academic, it's like, well, they'll fall by the wayside anyway, and they'll just go and get a normal job just doing whatever. Yeah, being a and number. Number. And then they'll, they'll be the more intelligent, a lot of the bunch, and it's like, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll send them to college. Well, from college, they'll progress to university. Jordan University, they'll, they'll accumulate some debt. We'll give them an option to get a mortgage. That'll be more debt. We'll give them a car on finance. That'll be more debt. And now they're fucking Endless scared. Pit, yeah. Now that's created the fear. What you were talking about before, the why people are scared well. to let go yeah. and go and and go and chase the dreams because yeah, yeah. it's like no, no, I'm working in the bank. I've got a good job. I'm the manager. Got all this debt Do you know what well. I mean? I've got a yeah. family as well. So if I walk like hard that. at this, I can't go and start knocking around with someone at the back of the cracker factory yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and chasing yeah. me goals. That's no. madness. It's <laughs> no, absolutely yeah. lose I'll obscenity. You, that, you, know you know what I mean? But it's the truth, though. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, because yeah. people are scared to, to to step outside because, and that's that's a method of control where. If there was none of that there, it'd be like, yeah, fuck it, I'll give it a go. And if it doesn't work in, in 12 months, I can just come back to this where people haven't got that you know flexibility is, in the lives. That's, I just think all this comes under, under being conscious, conscious, of having a conscious mind. Because like some people live and not cotton, like without, without being conscious of anything they're doing. So like just thinking, wait, living for the weekend, bro. Like live, waiting for Saturday. <laughs> like that. that's just like, if you see the way me and you talking here, we're clearly conscious beings, lads. Like we, 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 we've got aspirations, goals. We want to go do something. And there's loads of people, and I'm not speaking from a higher horse position. You're not conscious of what you're doing day to day. Because lads, how you do every, everything is how you do anything. You know what I mean? So like, like if you don't live and like thinking about where you're going to go, lad, then you're not conscious of anything that's happening to you, lad. Like no. you just may as well just be like, you may as well be like an NPC, lad. You know what I mean? It's like someone just, just put, with their hand up your back, just, you know what I mean? So I've said this on here before as well, I think, but it, it like my world view is my world view and the way you were saying about like the financial um, system and saying about like the world economy, like different places, you know, the people have got different views on, on, on like um, economics and finances and stuff like that. For me, like my, my economy is mine, it's not yours and it's... It, we're separate, lad. Yeah, this yeah, isn't th so. So I, I don't watch no mainstream media. I don't watch the news. So when I get up yeah, in the morning, time like someone says to me, "Oh yeah, it's fucked here. It's on its ass and that is it. It might be for you, but it, but, <laughs> it's, but it's not for me." Do you one know what person's, I mean? um, you know what the, the, Luke taught me about this, lad. So one person's like downfall is another person's opportunity. You know what I mean? So like he's an epitome of that, lad. So he, 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 he like in COVID, lad. What was everyone thinking? Like panic stations, bro. And he thought, right, this is a time where I could make money and like make something great. And and like he, he made this unbelievable online program to help people and, and like made a thriving business on the back of it. That's someone who creates opportunity in in, in, in chaos. You He's know an I mean? entrepreneur lad, as, well, as well as as well as as um, a role model. Yeah. Um, what's different about Threadfast than any other workout program? So the 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 main main reason that. Is is the intention behind it? So like, you lad, if you know you could you were a fly on the wall in our gym and you watch some of our team meetings, or even just going back to me and Luke just chatting about how to drive fast and just amongst ourselves, you'd see how, how much passion and like will to or want sorry to, to to help people that there is. And like again, lad, I'm a massive massive believer in energy. And like anyone who doesn't believe in it, you know know disrespect like but you're really naive because it's proven through it's quantum physics so like if you don't understand anything about quantum physics which is a very t difficult topic to like, explain but like things have got to go somewhere you're on it 
So like if you like as in like you you get you do something that energy goes somewhere it doesn't just disappear. It's all like it's part of quantum physics. You know what I mean? So if you believe in terms of like your energy and intention towards things go somewhere. Our energy and intention and steadfast is to help people, and it's going into that program every single day, like a, like a funnel, bro. You know what I mean? So then we are energy as well, aren't we? Yeah, Joe? That's yeah. all we're made up yeah, of. We're a matter of energy. Exactly. And if you've got one like strong, strong, like energy, what, what which happens is when you bring it together as well? You bro. get more and more of that. Exactly. It's just building something, isn't Literally, it? Literally, that's so. So that's that's the main reason why it's different. Now the workouts speak for themselves in terms of how hard they are. And it's the it's the effect that has on after you the workout. You Could feel. you give us an example of a steadfast workout? So, yeah, uh, well, one that, that uh, an example of one would be so five minute warm up, and then we do something called shred stats. So, like this is a shorter version of a of a longer workout, just to give people an idea. So you'd have your shred stats, and it's basically a way to monitor your your five k time, your, your your cardiovascular endurance, your muscle endurance, your strength, and your like your, your core strength and stuff like that. So you'd have a five-minute five, five minute warm up and then you'd do a baby am rap. So an am rap stands for as many reps as possible or as many rounds as possible. So in this case, it's as many bear pieces as you can get in, in 10 minutes. It's a way to monitor your cardio- cardiovascular endurance as well as like some muscle endurance when you're, when you're doing the bear piece and stuff like that because it's not like one. Um, so whatever number you get. So like, for example, I started on the first time, I got 155, I think. I'm on 222. In like four years, though, you know what I mean? So it took me that long to get up to that number. Um, but it's a way to gauge your fitness. So you do that once a month. You'll get a decent gauge of, of how fit you are, basically. Um, I suppose the intensity never goes away then because... It always turns out. <laughs> yeah, if I'm, if I'm doing 100 burpees now and that's all I can do in that 10-minute period, you yeah. might be able to do 220. Yeah. But that doesn't matter because... I'm pushing you're at your to, limit, get, bro. to get a hundred and yeah, you're pushing lads, to get to twenty. No disrespect to them again, like, like twenty stone women come in the gym, bro. And like lads, honestly, like for me, I've got a massive, massive belief in like like I, I like respects and lads not given. So like I'll she she come in, I'd I I'd take me out off to her, lads, she she barely overweight, un, unhealthy, I probably ticked all those boxes in terms of like her, her, her health. And she was grafting her ass off, bro. Like, I mean, like, I could see how hard she was pushing it. And I was just like, hey, that's fucking sick. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was Inspirational. just thinking, Yeah, lad, and, like, I've got so much time for people like that, lad. And, like, when she was doing it. But then again, I was like, I was thinking, saying it's nothing to do with my number. Like, I'm not fucking better than anyone because, because I got that, that number. I'm more asked about how hard are you willing to go to go get what you want. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I've seen, seen in these people. We use that as a gauge, and like you said, you're always trying to surpass that previous number, aren't you? Um, and it's hard when you're getting up to those big numbers, bro, because like yeah, you got you know what to expect. Like you're thinking, "Fuck me, this is gonna be hard." This, you know what I mean? Like there's no escaping it. You've got to have a strong mindset going into them type of workouts because you know how hard it's gonna be. Um, I was what you're doing um, in the gym, and with uh, fast transfer to other areas of your life. So. I think it's the values that are instilled in like which are fast so like you have these five rules for life um and like without going into them all specifically um like a lot of them are about like how, how you live your life take like, as a person like like you, you're all good models and stuff like that and like work ethic and like so through through the, through me pushing myself in those sessions and like going to my limit I will then leave that session and become a better person in me, like to me, a better boyfriend to me, to me, to me, bed or like, or, or like, like I don't like that. I've got, or ha- openly admit it, lad, I've got the shortest fuse in the world. Lad. Like, me get it from me, dad's not a good way to be, I'm not proud of it, but it's something that I have to try and channel the right direction. And those workouts help me, lads, massively. Because if I don't, and I've been injured and I haven't been able to train to the extent that I like to, and lad, I just snap, like punching holes and things and stuff like that. And it's not to be proud of, bro, but I'm not ashamed to say it. Um, it's who I am at the end of the day. So like it's a way of me controlling it. That's what's important. You know what I mean? Um, and like in terms of like that, so being a better person, and um, my decision making is better, lad. So like, like again, like I'll, I'll, I'll rather than like I think like it just gives you a lot of mind clarity. And um, I think if you if you start your day with that free clarity in mind, it doesn't always have to be the start of the day, by the way, because some people don't have the opportunity to do it in the morning, some people do it in the evening. But I think if you start in your day or, or going into your day with the cl- mind clarity, you, you, you're just a better person all around. Yeah. I'm just smiling because I know how much I can see it from the outside, how much your life's changed. 
since you've started, but it's it, it's amazing how something like that can be so profound. Much deeper and than a workout, lad, you know, it? that's what I always so say. So much, people. much deeper. It's so much deeper because it, it just got, it's a knock on effect. It's like, it's, it, 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 you, you, as you said, as you do everything, how you do anything is how you do everything. And it, 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 you couldn't have put it clearer. Everything in your life changes, doesn't it? Yeah. You start to hold yourself accountable in so many more areas. Yeah. The way you live, the way you're eating, your work ethic, everything. And, Definitely. And, and it makes you question yourself and look at yourself and it's just, everything just goes levels up. Lad, do you know what, I, what it is, lad? So, Jim, Jim Ron, you know, I'm Jim Ron, or Jim Ron, I don't know how to say his name, I think his mm. name is that. He's, a, he's like a motivational speaker mm. and he says, disciplines affect other disciplines. And what he means by it is, when you make... A, a, you have, let's say you have a discipline you, like in terms of like you, you, tra- you get up and you train or you get up early let's start with that you get up early and that then leads you to then train and that then leads you to then drink more water and that leads you to then um, plan out your week then that leads to all these things compounds and make roll onto like a domino onto the next thing and the same thing happens the opposite way it's two ways it's like yeah, if you're out of the way in the well. middle if you've done the wrong thing it's like bang 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 it's just more things come off the back of it if you yeah. do the right thing more thing and it's a compound effect and, and the stronger it becomes the harder it is to break and it's like if you're planting seeds to that if you you could now sit on the couch, yeah, and do fuck all for six months and probably still live a good life on the back of all what you've done. But then the next six months after that, yeah, yeah it's going to be hell. Yeah, yeah. Because people think, ah, oh, yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm at this stage now where, no, it, the rent's due every day, yeah, lad. Man, and yeah. if you don't pay it, mate, yeah. it, 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 you're going to fall you're down. You're in a debt, lad. 100%. And sometimes it's delayed gratitude or the, the delayed um, rewards. You know, you can be working that hard today and you think nothing's coming at this. Trust me, it's coming. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's it mightn't come simple. today, but it's coming tomorrow. I think you've got to keep grinding. You know, what, what's interesting about that as well, that is, is like, is, uh, you know, Jordan Peterson. So, yeah, he's the man, lad, and he, he says, um, people have this I love idea. Jordan Peterson. I, I've done this post recently, and, like, there's be a lot of, some kid actually messaged me, and I had to be laugh about, about it, now, to be honest, but he, he, I put a post saying, like, you know, when you, like, people have this idea of rest, like, they, they, they can't wait to just put their feet up, like, this idea of retirement, lad, yeah, putting your feet up and then sipping pina coladas is what he says in the thing. He said, you do that for two weeks and see how, see how bored shitless you get, bro, after, after it. And like, when I was on, I was being to Thailand for three weeks with my bird, and I loved it. It was boss. Looked amazing. Oh, lad, it was next level, bro. It was boss. But I was ready to come home, bro, because I just wanted to get grafting again, lad. And yeah, like, you start having all ideas the first week. You're like, I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to yeah, do nothing yeah, at yeah. all. But after week two, you're thinking, right, I could just do this and blah, blah, blah. But next minute, you find your mind's in this other place. And all you're doing is you're starting to plan. You're starting to plot. Yeah, yeah. And you get that thing where you want to get going. That's where, like I was saying, so so people have this idea of it. And like, lad, I've done a post and I said, basically, like, you know, if something's given to you and like, you should be be enjoying the process as in like, like, like that's where that's where the enjoyment is, you know. It's not the actual goal. So, like the it's, goals, bo- the goals, boss. When you get it, by the way, that like I'm not saying you shouldn't want goals and all because you that's what whole purpose of the whole process. You need the goal for the process. It's the process, though, and isn't that, it? So I was like, yeah, man, I need to get back to this process. Not me, you know, like I've had me already enjoyed it. Well, it's but, like if you set a goal, Joe. Yeah, it could be anything at all. Yeah, the second you achieve that goal, what you do? It's another one. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a never-ending story. Nah. So, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so if you can't fall in love with that process, you're gonna be severely unhappy. Yeah, because you're gonna be unhappy. You reach the goal. Oh yeah, you get a bit of like you're elated. You're happy. Another goal. You're really unhappy. You get there. The, the, there's them them winning moments. They're a lot shorter yeah, than the working oh, moments. Lads, 100%. And so like, if you people. can't fall in love with that working moment, yeah. you're gonna be you're gonna be sad. Well, lad, I was speaking to a lad yesterday. Still Ryan, if you're on to him. Still uh, Ryan, uh, still uh, gang. Love, love, Geezer, the boss, lad. boss, guy, lad, but love, love you, lads. But um, and he was, we were talking about that basically. And like when you you've got like so like I was on this post that I put on. I was saying that like you shouldn't want things to be given to you. You know, like you want to earn them. Like everything should be earned, not given. And like it's because when you get something that's given to you, like say you you win, I think a perfect way to put it is like any lads, for example, or, or girls, like win a footy bet. What do I used to do? I used to go and spunk the dog. 
So like I, like I win a bet and then like I just spend the money like that because it was just it didn't really feel like money that you didn't let you know what I mean I or like if someone gives you something you win the lottery some people like that they all have them go bankrupt bro you know what I mean don't so respect it the same exactly so the point I'm making is this kid messaged me and after I put that post on I went he went get to fuck lad I want everything for fucking free and then <laughs> I just, and, I, and I was just laughing I was reading it show me I went what the fuck mate? Went, what a fucking loser he is you know what I mean I said completely missed the whole point, point of what of I was what saying, saying yeah. but like he, was, he just pr- proved to me that there's so many people that just aren't like thinking like that I right way lad you know what I mean it's in, my, in my opinion it might be wrong but that's my opinion um, common sense isn't so common I know lad that's why that's, that's, that's why the scary thing <laughs> uh, you think the way you think like a lot of people would see l- with the world like that but they don't no, yeah. they don't yeah that, that's something sometimes I'd but be, that's a blessing yeah I, I struggle one of my, 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 bad, my bad points lad is I struggle sometimes to like I want people to think not so much like me in terms of like I just want people to be better you know what I mean? so like when they don't think that way I'm like frustrate you yeah lad it pisses me off lad like I we had a, 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 some, like I had a chat me and Luke and like lad I won't accept mediocre from anyone in our team so if someone I wouldn't accept it from myself lads so why the fuck would I accept it from anyone else bro so like when people aren't pulling the weight, lads, like in terms gotta go. of yeah, lads, they gotta go, and that's why people have come and gone in our team. Hundred percent, and, and like again, like it's it's not me like pointing anyone's finger on anyone in particular, because I think like every single person that's been in the team has been a brilliant person in their own right, and they've had a massive part to play. But just in terms of like the concept of what I'm saying, besides the teams put the teams on one side, because our team's brilliant, lads, and I'm, I'm happy with everyone. I just think as a person, like if you don't pull your weight, bro. I'll be the fucking first person to call you out on it. Because you won't find me not pulling me weight, lad. That, that, that's how I live my life. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's, it's one rule for one, innit? And one rule for all type yeah, of things. But you've got to all be wrong the same way. I know you're very, very big on being consistent. What are some good tips or pointers for staying consistent? So, um, basically, I think a good one is, and what we were saying before about going through your life aimlessly, if you've got no, like... Like you're waking up and saying like I can't stick to like so, so funny I was living, someone said something recently I let a scene I thought so through that trying to build like, a good habit on top of a bad one is like fucking smoking a biff in a nice bath you know what I mean <laughs> I, was, I was so funny that lad so if you're trying to build like this healthy eating habits but then you're still going out partying lad then you're gonna struggle bro it's like there's no foundation there you know what I mean if, you, if you're trying to like um, get up for the gym early and go to the gym but you're going to bed late then you, you're trying to build good habits on top of bad ones, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think a massive tip that I'd say is to actually plan out. Like, some people don't dissect the day enough to think, right, I want to be doing these things. But then the best thing I could say is, you know, the people who you want to be like, like in terms of like the way they live their life, think about what they do in that situation and then actually start doing it. You know what I mean? So like, if like they like for example, if someone's saying David Goggins always says he gets up at all mad hours, doesn't he in the morning? He's probably going to bed early, then, isn't he? You know what I mean? So like, doesn't take fucking Sherlock Holmes to work that out. You know what I mean? So like, so you go to bed early, uh, or like, if you turn like start going to the gym, like at least just start by mastering the art of showing up at the gym every day. So like, and even if you don't do the best workout, yeah, you're getting about that consistency it. of going to the gym, lad. You the know hardest I mean? part of going to the gym is it's going to the gym. Lads, yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> if you want to eat healthier, like this is more of a, a good tip. Like, so something I use very life changing in my life. Like Luke, Luke taught me this. So that's saying if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So I'm dead big on like sticky notes and that. Like in my room, lad. Like I'll, I'll have something on me somewhere where I'm gonna see it every single day. And it's gonna remind me to do something. So like drink a litre of water and it's on my door, that's what I leave me, you know what I mean? And like so before I get out of my room, I have to drink a litre of water. If I wanna read more, I have to put it on a book on my pillar. You know what I mean? So like I'll, I'll so I like, remind me to read that before I go to bed, bro. If I wanna like all these things like your work and the opposite of our sight, that's, our man. Yeah, yeah, literally that's what I'm keeping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like <laughs> it, it, it it's profound, lad. Sure. It really does help, bro. Like, like I, I think these little tips, lad, like they've had a massive effect on my life. And like I think it can help a lot of people. If you don't want to eat shit, lad, write a big sticky note on your fridge saying stop eating shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't eat the chocolate. Or just don't even buy it to begin with, lad, to be honest. But like if you've got a family where that's not the case, which is a lot of people, like just put something on it saying 
whatever you like for me for example whatever your intentions are chocolate bro you're on it or something like that if, if, if that's that just an example by the way that could be anything like in your car lad when you get in your car most people in the car most days that put on your car and stick you know saying make sure you go to the gym do you know what i mean like if you're looking at it and you're driving you're looking you're like, I feel like a loser here, mate. You know what I mean? Good driving on, knowing that that's there. That's why I try and get it done in the morning as well, you know, because my life's so busy and hectic and stuff like that. It plays on my mind, like, the certain situations or certain elements of what I do in my training. Like, I've got, like, commitments where I've got to go to that place at that time. And yeah. it, I hate that because it's like, yeah, I know I've got to be there tonight at 8 o'clock, but I've been up since the crack of dawn. I'm yeah. working all day, so it's playing in my mind, playing yeah, in my mind. That's but why it's perfect. I lads. see that as a challenge. But then, like, on the other days where it's more, you know, I put it in my own control, but I think to myself, I just get up and get this done. If I'm going to run in the morning, yeah, I just don't procrastinate at all because I know I can make a million excuses, so I'll just jump oh, up, headphones on, bang, gear on, wash my face, brush my teeth, see you later, I'm out the door, I'm gone. See, that what you're talking about, that's called, I always talk about this sort of negotiation. So, like, you're not They're negotiating, not negotiable, yeah. lad. So, so, like, you so haven't got time for that shit. In your shit. mind, you know, as soon as you start negotiating in your head, bro, like, thinking, ah, oh, fucking, I worked hard there yesterday, might swerve this, or my legs hurt, and you start saying things, or whatever. Like, as soon as that negotiation starts to happen, lad, you've lost the battle. Yeah, it's justification, you think, then. You're trying to justify stop it. Stop thinking, lad, and act. Stop thinking, and act. So, think about, like, I don't even, when I do my workouts, lad, don't think about doing them, lad, I just do them, you know when you When you start doing it, though, yeah, you know, when you wake up and you're like, oh, yeah, Tired, that, that's, that's the worst that, thing you can do, Yeah, that. and you're like, you, you go, oh, come here, just get going, like, yeah, throw your head yeah, up, yeah, it's yeah. dark outside, you get your headphones on, lad, I always say, I know by the time I get, like, a mile into that run or whatever, I'm like, I'm you're so laughing. glad I <laughs> fucking done this, you know. And then afterwards, lad, you feel even better on top mm, of that, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you, you just, you've, you, you, the hardest part, getting going, um, commitment is a really, really big one, and I feel like if you're fully in, fully all in on something you're more than halfway there would you agree yeah that's i think like that that like commitment level lad it's, it's consistency and, and repetition reps lad reps are showing up every day do you think if you decide though joe like <laughs> some people say they want to do something right and then tell us that to come or, to it they or, don't want or it. whatever but i'm saying like if you go you know what i'm fucking all in on this i'm yeah. i'm in lad we're doing this we're yeah, doing yeah. it and you know a hundred percent you need some of you're in, yeah. you're, you're in, yeah, yeah, you're you halfway there, lad. lad you're out, you're out. Before you've even started, I think that's like, say, like, you know, a good way to put it, lad. It's like, you know, when, um, like, let's say you've fell out with a friend or something like that, and like, um, and just for just, just, just an example here, and like, if you could be thinking about like that, that friendship, and like, it'd be dwelling on you and your mind and stuff like that, and like, over and over and over, but as soon as you accept the fact that that, like, right, I'm no, no longer friends anymore. Then, then you you move past it, don't you? So the point I'm making with that example is it might not be the best example, but you you as soon as you go go accept something in your mind, like this is what I'm doing, that's how things are, which is essentially what you've just said. Like you you, you then become like just okay with it, you know? Like you're like yeah, this is this is what my, my goal is here. This is what I'm decided to do. And then obviously, the, where where people might be thinking like well. Well, it's dead easy to do that, and until something until I can't be asked doing it anymore. I think there's discipline. definitely two. That's where discipline comes in, bro. So like, this is where those little tips and that that I'm saying help, lads. Do you know what I mean? I think you, you've got to have that that mindset, lad. Definitely. I feel mm. like though, stop dipping your fucking toe in. Either jump in yeah. or go yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. What I mean? oh, lads, 100%. There's some people who are like, yeah, it's like you know, I watch this thing, I listen to this. Um, like this 15 minute video with Sadaguru, another fucking legend and he was saying like if you got in the car and set your destination said you were going to fucking I don't know Tesco yeah. from here but you drove off the curb and then you went I don't know whether to go today you know I don't know what to do I'm gonna minute. Uh, what's happening Joe lad what are you yeah, up to yeah, yeah man yeah and then put the phone down to you and got another two yards up the street and it was like alright Luke how are you yeah. and then and then I'm, I'm, and then I'm thinking to myself, by the time I'm only at St. Anne's School, should I just swear it? Because I'm going for a meal later. And I'm like, I, there's a good chance I probably won't get there, yeah. or if I do, it's just going to be by. But you don't do that, do you? You just no. go and go into Tesco and you go bang. Well, it's the same with everything in your life. If you've got a fucking, if you've got a tour pattern or process where you're sort of half in, half out, yeah. the probability of you're not going to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you just set a goal, if it's like, right, okay, I'm going to be committed to working out, that's what I'm going to do because that the end goal is blah, blah. Yeah. If you go all in on that goal, yeah. you're in. Have you ever heard the saying, do what you know you should do? when you should do it, whether you want to do it or not. So, lad, it's, it's those three things, lad. Do what you know you should do, 
when you should do it, whether you want to do it or not. So, like, for example, walking the dog. Like, like you know you've got to walk the dog, bro. <laughs> now, don't procrastinate and leave it till fucking half 11 at night. Mm. Do it when you should do it, whether you want to do it or not. Like, that's a, it's just a non-negotiable thing that you have to do. That's Same thing, boss one. Can, that's where, like, people just think it's do what you know you should do, when you sh- it, whether you want to do it or not. That bit in the middle is so important, you know, when you should do it. Don't fuck about. Don't 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 don't, don't yeah, start thinking. It's, it's important do it, to do yeah. it now yeah, when yeah, you need yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like do that's it. think like like you've got to fucking pick the kids up or something, or and then you're half an hour late, and then like next thing you know, fucking something happens to them or something like that, or like they they they, they get lost and wander off or something. Like no, you go and pick them up when they're fucking meant to be picked yeah, up. Yeah, if I say if I say I'm mean. running in the morning, but for whatever reason I didn't, yeah, and then I start to saying, well I'll do it tonight at tea time <laughs> when I finished. I feel defeated, yeah. even if I still ran at tea time. Yeah. I didn't do it in the fucking morning yeah, when I set out to do it. You've lost that battle to a haven't you? Because yeah, you know you wanted to do it then, and you never. That when you should do it, so important. Lad, the afraid on a song, yeah. And it was the hardest thing and the right thing at the same. The hardest thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's true, lad. The hardest thing and the right thing are usually the same thing. Yeah, definitely, it, lad. We, right. The easy that. option is usually not the right option. That's it. So if it's easy, think about it. Oh, lad, you don't want it, bro. I think that's that's too, lad, definitely. Um, social circles. Can we please talk about your social circles, i.e. in work on a daily basis? Because this impacts us on our behaviours and our patterns and... I've seen a team you've got around you, the likes of Harrison and that who you were yeah. talking about, and you're surrounded by go-getters and high-output operators. Must inspire you to be better. Oh, lads, like, you know, like that thing again, like if it's our side, it's our mad. Or not even so much that, it's more so this is probably a better saying. If you're with six losers, you'll be the seventh. If you're hanging with five athletes, you'll be the sixth. You know what I mean? So, like, our circles, like, it's just, like, it's so, so, like, um, What's the best way to wear it? It's like high performing, as in like, like, you, like if you're in a room with people who are proper high performing, but then you, chances are you're gonna be a high performer. Same with the opposite, and like, they, we all want to be better, and we all want to. There's like that little bit of like good healthy co- competition as well, as in like, like so that. like from a PT perspective, I just like to, I think there's about a seven, no, but my PTs in the gym now, and um, all set fast PTs, and like. We all want to, like, be doing the most personal training sessions each week. And, yeah. like, and it's because, like, I, I, I do, lads. I, I want to be, like, we all, we all want to be improving. And, it, and that, it creates that. Like, on, it's not that I'm comparing myself to someone who's doing doing something else. It's more so, I, I am to a degree in the sense that, like, I, I, I want to be doing that, man. I want to be Do you think there's the vision of the field of this is what could be done? So yeah. it's like if I'm doing 100 yeah, sessions yeah. a week, like Joe, and you're doing 50, yeah. doesn't really matter to you that I'm doing 100 and you're doing 50 in one sense. It shows you what's potential. Show, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, well, if well, you, I learned that with that, the team, bro. That's the, the, there's the max. Well, I, I thought, I was so naive I was, that, I was, I was doing really well with the personal training when I started off at the ground and really good. And um, then I, I there's me being naive, young, thinking, yeah, I must have all the fucking, all the people that want to do shit ever fast me. Was like people aren't getting on me every week, and then they got we took all the team on board, and lads. There's so many people out there that want to train, bro. And it made me think to myself, lad, you need to fucking check yourself. Like, you could have been, they could have been yours. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's not because I don't want other people to have them. It's more so like, like I was thinking, there's enough for yourself. all of us as yeah, well, yeah, hundred percent. It's more so to the point like I had a, I had a personal attack at myself for thinking, lad, why the fuck did you, was you just content with what you had there? You, you know, there could have been so more. more. Exactly, lad. And, it's, and I'm made up for the other PTs that do well. I want them to. And that's because of the circle you surrounded with yourself because we put these limitations there that or oh, we set the bar so I but yeah. if you're on your own how high is the bar Joe like if you you said to me That's oh it, yeah. I could you, run you that distance it, in 30 minutes and you think it's amazing yeah. and and, every, and like you train with three people and, and they take 35 one takes 39 the other takes 42 but you're the dog's bollocks because you do it in 30 yeah. then one of them say me mate Jack's coming and running tomorrow I rock up and I, I do it in 27. Yeah. That 30 you thought was good for six no months, lad. It's it smashed your going on, going on. It happened oh to me a few times. God. That lad, with like, that lad, Harrison. Harrison. Make you check yourself, lad. lad. He's fit as fuck, that kid, lad. Honestly, like, he's the fittest kid in our team, hands down. And, like, I was, you know what I mean? So, like, I, I, and this, I am very, very fit, lad. But, like, I, I would say, when he come on the team, lad, he started beating me on that baby thing I was telling you about. And I was just, like... <sighs> 
Yeah, I thought I was fucking. I thought that was the boy, me. I thought I was the cardio one, and it's been led it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So led it. You know, it's, it's only good though, me, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. It, 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 that, and again, that's perspectives. Some people go on and like, oh fucking hell, he's come now. It's like yeah, he's come. The time for for me to show up. All right, to be a winner in a room of losers, bro. You know what I mean? It looks you. You want to show up and, and like be a, look look great in a room full of people who are mediocre. Then you can do that. But try and look good in the full of the, in a room full of people full of winners, lads. The ones who are top, top, top tier. That's the, that's the environment we've the created. elite. Yeah, the elite, bro. That's the environment we've created. Elite trainers. You know what I mean? So you want to be the best, lads. You're gonna have to do some graft. You know what gotta I mean? Gotta be, gotta beat the best. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. If someone's looking to change the life for the better. And wants to improve in one or all areas, what would your message be to them? So, in terms of my message, I'd say, if it sounds like I'm plugging it, bro, but like, I I'm, I'm don't give a fuck, like, because like, I say it's what you think, bad. fuck it. Start step fast, mate, and like, just watch it change your life. Like, because what it's been, like I said earlier, about the intention behind it and, and what it can do for you, and what I've watched it do with thousands of people. Thousands, I'm not talking fucking a few, few, few like hundred lads, I'm talking thousands of people. I've watched them improve their life, become better parents, get better jobs, um, manage the money better, just, just make better decisions. I've watched someone come in, a mess, and then watch them now to this day, and they're like, wow, that's fucking life changing. You might think it's just a coincidence with me, or my, or cause, or cause my, I've got a strong mind and all that, but I've watched it every day, lad. So my advice would be, Sign up to Shred Fast and you'll see what we're about and you'll see how it can have such a profound effect on your life and how it'll change you for the better. That that that's me me um he drops my class. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Man first, body second. I feel personally the mind must be stronger than your body. Then your body can or will naturally follow suit. It's not possible to be a savage physically. If you've got a weak mentality, how do you strengthen your mind and how do you keep it strong? So a little analogy I use with people, and they think it's extreme, extreme but uh, I don't really care, to be honest. It's a, it's, a, it's a way to explain it. So, if someone had a gun to your head and he said to you, Right, we'll shoot you unless you do under a thousand babies, lad, you'd find a way to do it. I'm telling you, because you know you're going to die otherwise, or at least you'd get to the point where you're fucking going to pass out. And you're, you know what I mean? And you'll end up do passing out. So, if you can get yourself to that point within the right reason, and that means that the potential's there, doesn't it? you just got to have the reason, 100%. bro. So the com concept is you've got to be able to tap into that no matter what the reason is. So, like, you've got to be able to think, right, it's go time, man. Like, this is this is now. This is where to switch it on. Not whether that person's got a gun behind your head or, or, you, or, you're, just, or you're just doing it just off your own little cord. You know what I mean? What does Joseph Rugen do when he wakes up in the morning and he feels like shit? Or when he when, when he feels like he's got a bit of a cold? Or when his fucking foot's hurting? Or he's, you're not 100%. Yeah. And you've got Luke on with morning bro, what's happening? Like yeah. on the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. Was, that was a Luke Parle impression. Lad, 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 you do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what's funny, lad. This is, what, this is the type of people, me, me and Luke, this last five, I love the bones of them, lad. So I was proper sick about two and a half years ago. Like proper ill, lad. Like me, couldn't, lad, I was, you know, my head was spinning. I had a, it was like a flu, proper heavy flu. And like, honestly, people saying, oh, you, sh you shouldn't train on the flu and all that. But then, anyway, I rang him. And I said to him, I mean, you know, bro, fucking, I don't know if I'll be able to come in, lad. And I bear in mind, lad, that's not like me at all. Like, I can't, mm. like I've, I've only ever said that once and it was then. Yeah. And he just, he just listened to me. And he said, I see you at the gym at nine, lad, yeah. And I just put the phone down. <laughs> 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 lad, and I, and I was just like that, my babes, next to me. She went, are you going in? I went, I'm off to one. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, lad, it was hilarious. Yeah, you've got anxiety before you're making a phone lad, call like that to a man like in, that, lad. Yeah, lad, and then, lad, I got in and I was in a bad way the whole time. And then I got to the end. And then when I got better a couple of days later, I was like, lad, I give him a big hug. I went, lad, thank you for that. Because I was being a fucking loser, mate. Like, even just, even though I wasn't well, I didn't feel great. And like, and, and there's, there was a deeper meaning there, lad. I was still showing up, bro. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I was still showing just up, showing up. Showing up, lad. No matter what happens, I show up, bro. You know what I mean? The mind's a muscle and it needs exercise to be maintained. 100%, lad. What would you say some of the biggest challenges people face when science had achieved the fitness goals? Challenges is, like you said there, lad, about like, it's, a lot of it's just due to like a weak mind, lad, you know? I think like, 
yeah, the, the, the society tries to poison you in terms of like the the, the exact, like as soon as you go in the supermarket, lad, all the stuff that you don't want it's unhealthy for you is the first thing you see. All the aisles is the first thing on offer when you walk in. The one that's Tesco and all the has the Easter eggs around your face as soon as you go in, bro. All the healthy stuff's hard to find, <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Like, like, you've got to go looking for it, lad. So, like, I think that's where people struggle because, like, they see things and then they're just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I just have that meal, like, or even, um, or even so more so, like, with the training side of it. Like, the, the, if you're not, like, regimented in, like, a routine, I'd say, like, in terms of advice, so it's not so much where I think people are going, it, it, it is where people are going wrong, but, like, you you've got to have a routine, lah. Like like my like this is why I struggled when I was on holiday a bit because I was traveling all places that around Thailand, and like I like my routine, me bro. I like getting up at the same place, having a coffee in the same place, doing my workout in the same place. Creatures and of habit, aren't we? Proper, lad. We are. It's instinctive. Some people more so than others, but like over time, lad. Like like you build this thing, and then when you don't do it, you feel some, something's not right. Something's not quite there, lad. You know what I mean? So when you don't, like I wake up sometimes. I take sea moss every day. Um, oil minerals shout out because best sea moss you get and mate and I feel unbelievable off it and um, yeah so I take sea moss every day and some days lad I'm not, I, I, one day I didn't have it and lad sounds proper stupid and proper in touch with my body and I felt a bit like I felt like something wasn't right lad mm-hmm. and then like the next day I went fuck me I forgot to have my sea moss lad and like and then even if it was placebo like something just didn't feel right in me lad so like the point I'd say is people don't create enough routine don't give it long enough to create a habit you know what I mean? mm. so they, they, they cave in after like fucking a month a, a month isn't long enough you know to, to create like a lifestyle like no they, yeah it's just uh, to get started yeah it's just that, that that's just a kindle bro that's the kindle to the flame lad you know mm. what i mean like that lad you've got you need to commit to something for like 12 months bro 12 months people don't want to hear that though, lads. they don't want to hear that though like i like i'm trans i'm as transparent as you can get there's like, no quick fixes no, the job no, no lads not even close I'm, not, I'm as transparent as you get me lads so like when people start with me whether it's coaching or advice or whatever I say, if you're looking to get in shape and then think after three months, I'll have fuck it off. I'm not your guy because I'm looking to change people's lives. Don't me. waste your yeah, time. Don't yeah, waste yeah. mine. Lad, I'm a, like, I've got better things. I've got people there that want me time permanently, as in, like, not forever, to a point where, like, 12 months, yeah, I can change your life in 12 months. You ain't prepared to give me 12 months of your time, then I'm probably not the guy for you. There's other people that will, that'll take your reddies off you and they'll be happy with that, but that's not me, lad. Yeah. You're, not so You're there to change. Yeah, I'm there to change, lad. And I've got well, I've got over 50 clients that would agree to that, that'd stand on that for me. You yeah, know what I mean? testament to it. Yeah, 100%, lad. When you said about the supermarket, when you go in, it's something that just struck me there when you said, like, you know, you've got to go looking for the good stuff. <laughs> that's pretty similar to life, innit? Nah, lad. You've got to go looking for the good stuff. Yeah, all the bad shit's bad in your face, lad. You know what I Got to go looking but, for yeah, it. Yeah, 100%, bro. What inspires you to become a PT? Lads, you know what? It was the most organic thing you'll ever come across. So, Luke, to be honest, I was doing the work and doing the workouts with him for ages, and um, he just said to me one day, "Hey, have you ever thought about personal training?" And I was just like, "Nah, man." He said, he "Said I reckon you'd be sick at me." He said, "Do you want a job?" And I was just like, and I, "Do you remember what I said to you? I knew I was going to be a part of it somehow. I just didn't know how." That was it, lad. That was the that was the chance. So he just said it to me and went. Never really thought about it, you know, bro, but I said, fuck it, so I said, I'll have a go, like, and then went home, said to me, dad, dad, this is what I'm doing, I said, oh, fuck, and then this is where he was saying, oh, I don't know, it's a good idea, I went, dad, honestly, like, I'm going to make it work, like, I know, I said, even if I have to take a pay cut to be happy, fucking hell, I'll, I'll, and lad, I was, I was the, I had the freedom to make my own choices, lad, no one could control me, I worked for Luke, but I didn't. Did Don't. you feel liberated when you left the bank to go there? Oh, lads, I, like, I, I was waking up every day, I got to the point, lads, and I still, like, lads, sometimes I sound like I'm putting a bevy on, but I pinch myself because I think, like, I wake up every day, I've got it, I go to an environment where, like, I was going, I could do what, I, I, I work hard by choice, you know what I mean? So, like, like, if I wanted to just have a day off, lad, not that I will, I just, I can't, you, you know what I mean? That, that just knowing that, lad, is, is, was so fucking great like can't even explain to someone so like I'm not shitting again on people who don't work for themselves because that's off to you know it takes a fucking real person to get up every day and work especially if you've got a family 100%. and stuff like that but in terms of like having that freedom for me lad just to like I wake up and think yeah I've got fucking loads of clients I'm going in by choice to graft and then and, and then and then still doing more and on top of that that's all by choice but having that freedom that was, was what, what was so great for me so with the PT and that's what I liked about it the most and then when I took the in essence, and then I took a pay call for a bit, and then it just then it just fucking took off, lads. And like, cause the reason why I took the pay call, cause I was 
when I, I was in the process of leaving my job, I couldn't just leave straight away. Um, it was like, like they hadn't paid me and stuff like that for that month. And um, and he's saying, isn't he? If you've got one foot in one door and one foot in the other, you, you won't really get the full effect. And as soon as I got myself out that door, lad, and went in, it just took off, lad. You know what I mean? This is where the podcast goes full circle because going back to me opening statements, there's a version of yourself you haven't met yet. Keep showing up till you're introduced. On day one, did you ever imagine that you'd be sitting here now where you are? No, bro. I, 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 it's crazy. This exact situation that I'm in, lad, not at all. But I did know I was going to do something with my life, lad. And I'm nowhere near done. And like, but I'll tell you what, lad, I'm on the right path, lad. I'll tell you that for sure. Like, do you feel like you're on the right path now, Joey? 100%, bro. Like, uh, that, like, the fact that like, I, I haven't really talked about it as much as I wanted to, but that I, 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 even though I've made done, done all these things that I've been talking about about myself, I all look so much like in terms of like the opportunities that he's given me, the advice he gives me as, as he's my brother him, like, like swear like, like he's the older brother that I never had, you know what I mean? Like, I love the relationship that you've got, and I love how you talk about it and yeah, because yeah, you can yeah. see how much respect yeah. you've got for him and. Swear. You know, I think it'll be reciprocated by Luke as well now well, because obviously over time you just built the bridge. At first you were going to him, looking to him, and I know obviously you've looked to him for advice, you've looked to him for guidance to be a role model and stuff like that. But the way you were talking about the team there and you're mentioning, you know, other other people in the team who hold you accountable. And you're the leader of that team for Luke. Yeah. So he hasn't put you in that position for nothing, brother. So you should be massively proud of yourself because Appreciate he that, doesn't bro. just choose anyone. No, so that's, that's a that bro. shows you where you are. Yeah, lad, I tell you it's a saying, marker for you. I think a big thing with me, lad, is, is about like gratitude, lad. So like, you know what, lad? It's easy for people to forget how they got to somewhere. You know, like, like so many yeah. people, great forget people, lad, they forget they forget what 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 who who helped them along the way and like. And like, and it, it, it can be. Uh, we all need a it. touch, you know. Lad, look, swear, and and like that's why I always reiterate how grateful I am to Luke. It's not to make myself feel better. It's a fact, lad. Like I've been waiting for him, lad, and the advice he's given me advice of someone ten years older than me that I you can't buy that, lad. Like that wisdom, bro. You can only learn, you can only learn it through experience. I also feel Luke's the type of lad that <clears throat> he could be the same age as yeah. Or he could be five years younger than you, and he'd still blow your mind and blow your head <laughs> yeah, off yeah. because he's just that type of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the way he's inspired you and he's helped you, he's done the same thing for thousands of people. He will have done it for people who he doesn't even fucking know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't know he he's does, done yeah. it for. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's percent. Because they've just looked to him and went, yeah. And that that's what a role model does, and that's yeah. what a leader does. Let's talk about being the manager of Steadfast and what your role consists of. So manager of Steadfast, so. Again, the job sort of came about quite organically, as in, like, I seen Luke, Luke realistically, that where Luke's at now, with, with it right now, he, he's, his focus needs to be on lucrative tasks, and by that I mean, like, tasks that are going to elevate the programme. Now, the day-to-day running of that, he's not better than those jobs, but, like, he's the brains of it all, lad, and I help him massively with it, don't get me wrong. What I want him focusing on that, you know, he's so, got to run. You, yeah. you, you've got to manage the business, and he's got to run it. Yeah, exactly. He's got to make it work. Yeah, yeah. So like the headaches, in, not, well, not headaches, lads. Just developments of it. Um, in between, that's my responsibility. So anything like I, I try and mitigate any unwanted brain power that he's using on stuff that he doesn't really need to be thinking about, bro. So like his, his focus should be on progression, as in like developments of, of what's the next ideas. You know what I mean? How can this get better? How can like you can't think of that lad when like when you're, you've you're got all people coming with people problems in that lad yeah. and like saying oh like I haven't got like like if if, if some one of the PT clients dip a bit and they're just like oh panicking and that like he's not there to reassure them lad you know what I mean but like as as the manager like it's not my job to reassure people as well but that's just an example like but it's like, growth isn't it at first he was there for that but yeah, then it once it, once it gets yeah. to a certain stage it's like if <laughs> you want yeah, if yeah. you want to elevate it and you want to grow. Then he's got to be sitting down thinking, uh, you know, d- different angles. How can you make it bigger? How can you make it? Um, it's vast. Tasks, it, it's yeah. vast anyway. It yeah. is vast, but you know, it's it, it's the growth of it. You must feel massively honoured to be in that role. So lad, I, I've I've I managed that fast, and I managed the gym that he owns. Heal well being. So, so those two things are completely different jobs. It's realistically that I do. I have three jobs, me. So like I'm, I'm I'm the manager of the heal well being. I manage Steve fast. PT. And I'm a PT, and out of all of them, that the managing that gym is the hardest one. 
Yeah, he loves being. Yeah, it cause reason being it involves a lot of tasks that I'm not passionate about. So like, and, and what's a typical day in the life of Joe Rogan? So starting from the morning. You wake up in the morning. What time do you get up? So I get up at half three every morning, <laughs> religiously. So and and at first, within the first two minutes of waking up, I get in a cold shower, freezing cold, without even like like thinking like no no no, no talk goes to me man lad cold shower straight away, and then um how long is the cold shower? About two minutes lads, ninety seconds to two minutes roughly about an hour and that. Then I'll finish on a warm shower. Now people be listening to this thinking. Oh, you're not getting the benefits because it's, it's meant. No, the reason why I used to do it the opposite way around. I used to have a warm shower and finish on a cold shower, and you get a lot of health benefits from that. As in, like you get the adrenaline, spikes your adrenal gland in your brain, which makes you more focused and stuff like that. It's good for your immune system and everything else. But what I'd say about um, the other way around is resilience. Recent, yeah. So, lad, there's a recent <laughs> study that's gone on Andrew Huberman, and it's um, the mid singular cortex part of your brain. I can't remember the name, can't the actual reference, but. Um, it's basically it gives you the will to live and the only time you grow it is by doing something you really don't want to do so lad that dude that morning thing lad honest to god I've yeah, had cold showers and with you get in and turn the shower on cold it's a horrible place to lad. be if you get in and you get it warm Jordan the shower you're saying to yourself psyching yourself up I'm going to turn this cold <laughs> in a minute I'm going to turn it cold I normally do 60 seconds but I'm going for a minute and a half today yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah, and yeah. that and then you put it on and like you're talking to yourself while it's cold so you get in that zone and once you're there you're sound you're yeah, there yeah, you, you can yeah. stay in it for longer yeah. it's not your as bad your body temperature's higher as well you know so like because you've been in warm so you've been in the warm so your body temperature's higher so it takes more to get it down so but when you're getting cold lad it's a shock different gravy <laughs> oh. different gravy honestly lad I, I do it every morning and every morning lad I dread it I honestly lad I dread it and until that becomes something that I don't dread anymore I'm going to keep doing it lad so like like, like I said, for anyone who's listening is thinking, well, oh, that's not the way you're meant to do it. No, it's the way I want to do it because it make, gives me this this thing about that thing in your brain that grows. It gives you the will to live, makes you want to be alive. So, like, that's why I do tasks like that. So, moving on from there, so then I'll lay uh, all my bag and I'll be prepped from the night before. Um, though it's because lads are just big on like organized, I'm like organized, most we'll organized. Come and to we'll come to that. Um, so then the next day, yeah, sorry, I've done that day before then. I'll do my affirmations after that on my desk in the same spot every morning. Uh, I've got this book, lad, it's got my name on it, just says winner, winner mindset on it. I've made like a customised book that I got made. It's got all my affirmations in. And then um, this is something that like I took from Luke. And um, this lad is like life changing advice, this lad, honestly. I, I, I want people to know it because it's helped me so much. And I've written this like on a couple pages down, I've written this person who I want to be in, f- in five years. And like, all the qualities that they possess, you all the today. things, and and lad, I write it, write it down, and I read it to myself every single day, lad, every day, morning and night, and then eventually when that happens, bro, I'm gonna be like, I've spoke that into existence, you know what I mean? So like, I start, I, I go through that process of reading that, reading my affirmations, and then reading that little text, and then I go to the gym, and I start clients at five a.m. and I wait till about ten, um, and then I'll say myself at ten. Then I'll have my lunch and then I'll manage the gym from about 12 till 12 till 4. And then I'll PT people again on 4 till 7. And then I'll go home, which I don't live close, lad. Um, I'm from Crocky, but I moved to um, I live out the way now, lad. Live in um, just push past Formby in um, Ainsdale, you know, Ainsdale. Mm. And um, rough there. No, I know that. I know that. I know that. I moved about five, five and a half years ago. I mean, no, it's nice. Really, very nice. Place, lads, like. I, I look, like, say, lad, people think I was a guy who was in, but lads are fucking good. Be blessed to live there. Crocky, really. lad. You know, mm. and then I grew up yeah. in, in West Derby. Like, not West Derby, Crocky Park. I used to live by. And my mum's from, my dad's from Anfield, my mum's from Kirby. Um, and that's what I was saying. Like, I've, I've, I'm lucky to be in the position that I've been by the privileged life, lad. You know what I mean? But. Yeah, so it's forty-five minute journey anyway for me to get to and from work. So like, I'll, I'll won't get home till about quarter to eight. I'll have my tea and then I'll go to bed, and then I'll do the same thing the next day. Well, when I, when I, when I go to bed, sorry, I'll do my affirmations and all that again. Sorry, and then then I'll go to bed after I've had my tea. That commitment but and that's dedication. Bro, bro, like people think like this is all saying to someone yesterday. People think that you've got to enjoy every single thing you do every day. You know, like I love my job, lad. Yeah. But do you think I love getting up at half three every morning, lads? No. Do you know, fuck. Do you think I love to go to bed? Some people like to get home 
have a cup of tea with the feet up, watch a film and that. I don't get that shit, me, lah. I just, like, I don't get that luxury and I don't want it either. I just, I love that process of fucking, that's me, that's the grind, that lad. Like, that, 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 five days a week doing that, Monday to Friday, and then on a weekend, say, like, we'll just expand on. Like, that, that's what I do, most, like, nearly every day, lad. My, like, 80% of my time, that's what I live my life. And, like, and then, I, and then, that's why, like, I'm saying, I don't expect the less from people because, I'm the first one in the gym and I'm the last one to leave. So, like, it, it, that's where, like, no one can have any qualms. No excuses. Nah, no one can say nothing to me, lads, because, like, like I, what are you going to say, lad, that I don't work hard enough? So, you can get to fuck, lads, because, like, I, I, I'm the first one there, <laughs> last one to leave, you know what I mean? That's why first I... First in, last yeah, out. Exactly, lads. And, like, and in that time as well, I'm doing fucking three jobs, lad, you know what I mean? So, like, I won't stand for it. Steadfast itself's massive. And it's had some really, really well-developed athletes follow the protocol, and they've only had good things to say about it. One of them being Tony Bellew, <laughs> in preparation for his role in the film so. Creed. And I remember him on live television referring to Luke and Steadfast, and he said, he's brilliant. It's not that the kids reinvented the wheel. It's just so hard. It can't <laughs> not work. And the kid who had trained with Luke and Steadfast, he's brilliant. He's really good at what he does, man. It's not... It's not that he's reinvented the wheel. It's so hard, it can't not work. But it's the way he does it. And I was just like, yeah, you know, Darren Till as well, he's had some great feedback with it. You know, the format has also attracted some of the high-profile guys, like Paul Smith, the comedian. And I think yeah. my point being is, that's a testament to what how successful and how effective it is. Oh, lads, well, you know, again, funny all these things, you're asking me these things, you know, because I've only been speaking about them the last few days. And... Um, yeah, so it's like I was speaking, you know, what everyone says about these Russians, like these Russians work and no one works like these no. Russians, lad. Everyone says it, don't they? Yeah. And lad, so I said to a lad who I know who's been out there filming Russians, like these like Russian UFC fighters, yeah, and the athletes like that. and yeah, that, yeah, the athletes. Khabib and, 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 and all that. And he just watched us do a workout, you see, he was, uh, and he was, he was do, watching us with train. And I said to him at the end, because I knew he had been, you see, and I said, uh, hey, them Russians work, I don't like that. <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and he said they're not lads and you didn't hear that from me so lad I was just thinking to myself hey lad I, that just validated what I knew about how did I did you need to know that job I felt like I did though you know like yeah yeah I, I knew him but I wanted that wanted them to tell me yeah, wanted you it from the horse's mouth yeah, lad you yeah. know what I mean I confirmation someone who's seen it to be like because everyone says it about these Dagestanis and I'm like that and lad by the way I'm sure they fucking have unbelievable yeah, you can see, I'm not you, saying you can we're see better how hard they were. yeah 100% but like I'm telling you no one is working like we are. We like, like it's crazy, lads. Like I'm telling you, I had to stand on that between and anyone wants to come and watch me. I'll give you the front row seat. You know what I mean? So like like that we we got it the craziest, craziest, hardest workouts. But the thing is, the beauty of it all is don't be don't be scared by that because our slogans anybody can. All the workouts are adjustable to what your hardest is. Do you get what I mean? So like doesn't mean you gotta go home and lift and do crazy five K times and all shit like that. It's just like you you whatever your limit is, we'll find it. But then, and that's what that's that, that's what Shredfast is. That it, it, find, it finds you for true potential. You know what I'm saying? That 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 that's that's a deeper meaning. You know what I mean? The way I see it, lad. You're a leader, Joe, and you lead from the front. You must be to have the job roles you have. Where does your leadership skills come from? So, I do you know what, bro, Luke. So a lot of it, I'd say ninety percent of it comes from Luke, lad. So like he, he he's. He's a leader in his own right, lad, massively. Like, he's, he's, he's shown me in a lot of ways, lad, what it takes to be a man. And um, I'm like, and to get to lead people in the right direction. Because he's, he's he, he, he'll agree with this as well, because he said it to me, that the, when he, because when he, when he, he's like a role model for me, he never wants to let me down. So like, so like. This is my next question. Lad, You're swear. killing me gear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lad, so like. Yeah, I don't want to ruin your question. No, lad, it's okay. Like, Carry on, lad. He, I'm only joking. He's, um, <laughs> he wants me to. He, he, so like, he makes better choices because he knows I'm looking up to him. You know, so like, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah. So basically, when I so he's actually leading from the forefront. He's getting in the gym every day, grand and grafting with us, lad. You know, and he's showing me like, like, like this is one thing that I, lo- I love about him, lad. He's not one of those type of guys to as I say, not as I do. Lad, he's been in that gym, grafting with me every day since the fucking day that I met him. 
and doing the shitty jobs that no one wants to do and no one wants to do now and he's still there doing it yeah he'll still mop the floor yeah 100% lads and like, I'm not just saying to make him sound better lad because he, he fully does do live by that he does and like I, I hate people that and, I, and like or not even hate people like I, I don't like when people say like me, I have a joke with my dad. So he obviously don't like me dad, but he just he's a t- irritates me when he says it. So he would tell me, like, have, let's say you're eating a bar of chocolate or something. I don't know what it was, orange juice. I like to have a glass of orange juice. My dad would go, don't, you shouldn't fucking eat that. I think that's sorry, it's full of full of sugar. And then he'd be saying it, oh, lad, what is he eating a bar of chocolate, lad? You know what I mean? So, like, I won't, I, I don't like when people do that. Like, so they, they, so I was thinking, like, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't even, you don't even live by that saying, like, like eat us yourself. Yeah, so if like, you live by it, say it. No, not exactly. So, if you don't, then don't even bother. That's not all, that's what I think anyway. And no. Luke, Luke, lad, Luke does everything he says. Like, I don't do this, so then, but he's got a right to say it to me then because he doesn't do it himself, you know what yeah. I mean? Or he does do it and he says, like when when people were PTing, he used to start off in a shitty freezing cold gym, like and it, and it was like uh, like PTing people. Of, um, it was the, the gym he started on was the one in the dock road. Yeah, if I remember yeah, right, yeah, lad, I know the gym. It's by the BMW garage. It's yeah. on the corner oh, there, lad. I can remember oh, when he was in there years around. ago. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Or rats running around and that. And lads, so at times when I started in the one in entry. Lad, that gym was like, because it was a unit, it used to get freezing, lad. Yeah. I'd say to him, lad, Big like, I'd come in early and it was freezing. Like, I used to train people like three layers on, like skiing, coat a lot, throwing kettlebell swings and that, lad. And fucking, and I used to say to him, lad, fuck, it's freezing the hell, Luke. And said, that's the ground, but Luke would go, lad, you want to see what I used to have to do, lad, so you can get to fuck, he said, like, moaning. And I weren't even moaning, I was saying, lad, it's freezing, get that eating on, but it's dear, lad, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, because yeah, we had these electric heaters, lads, yeah, and we had Bruce D's, the infrared ones to put on, yeah. so we didn't have them on all the time. So then when I, he'd say, lads, get you, he said, honestly, job, like, you want to see what I used to have to do, lad, pay your fucking dues. Lad, lad I love that, though, because, yeah. you know, when you when you get there as well, it's so much nicer, <laughs> you know? Lads Where have you just rocked up on like the facilities or amazing stuff? gyms like away. that, no. So the PTs in our gym, I was the only one who had to work on that other one really in hell and hell and for a short period. And the other PTs don't we've got a fifty thousand pound heating system in the gym. We've got saunas, ice baths, a coffee shop inside the gym. Yeah. We've got a boss gym facilities, all kettlebells that you need, boss quality kettlebells. And when the mo like, if I ever get any slight bit of moaning out of people, I just say, lads, sure, or whoever it is, shut the fuck up. Like, honestly, like, said you, and like, politely, low, like, I say, like, you yeah, want to see what I have to do, so never mind what Luke had to do. And you're moaning about a couple of months in, get to fuck me. It's like, honestly, like, like just pay your dues, lad. Like, That's it, yeah. And it, as I say, it's so much nicer when you get there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, it's deserve it. Um, does it make you check yourself? Good for them, it's good for you. It's like what you've just said to me about Luke there. Saying like, you know, he'll only he'll only tell you to do something if he's done it himself or whatever. Would you be in the manager and trying to press that so hard? You've got to check yourself, haven't you? Yeah. You couldn't physically sit there saying, "Oh yeah, do this, do that, blah blah blah," and be a role model <laughs> of such a thriving environment if if you're not like that. It's and easy with, to with wag having, your finger, isn't it? It's easy to wag your finger and say do the, like, do all these shitty jobs and like or whatever it is if you're not prepared to do them yourself. That's why with the workouts, lad. Anyone who I I for a short period, only because we wanted the customers to experience the workout better. We used to do the classes with the clients, with the customers, in the because the classes are shocker, and I used to do it with them, and I'd be shouting while I'm doing it, which is a fucking task in itself, lad. So then when they'd moan and say it was hard, I'd go, hey, if I can shout and do the workout, then you can do the workout without moaning. And then and and point to make them by all that is is that I like don't tell me I'll I'll do it with you you know what I mean I won't sit here and tell you to do something that I'm not prepared to do myself you know what I mean yeah. so like that whole like idea of, like like I I like I like the idea of, of saying to people yeah I'll do whatever it takes that's just, leading yeah, from the front that's leading bro yeah that's it, it's like Steven Gerrard I'm not a Liverpool fan by the way I'm Everton fan but he's a perfect example two Everton fans <laughs> in one week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a fucking sign up uh, by that door. Well, lad. as much as it uh, wasn't wasn't his biggest fan, lad, he's a uh, he's someone who just used to lead from the front, lad, in terms of his actions, you know what I mean? 100%. So like he wasn't out there shouting at people and that he'd just show you how time it was, lad, you know what I mean? Great player. And like he'd just he'd, he'd show up and he'd be he'd lead look that that game against fucking that AC Milan, lad, you know what I mean? Like he he just took the game by the scruff of the neck and, and then done that. And people game. follow, don't they? Yeah, they when follow When they see that, yeah. people follow, they just follow suit yeah. and that's how I like to that's how I like to do things in terms of leadership. I like to like I do I do talk as well, but in terms of like I'll show you, you know what I mean? You follow me and I'll show you the way, you know what I mean? 
It's a great way of doing things. And all this is only an introduction to what you guys are doing is for you. It's a way of life. But you have a programme like 21 days or 30 days and it's a full cycle of training. Can you tell us the reason for the specific time layout in the programme? So, they say it takes 21 days to create a habit. So that's where it comes from. Now it takes, they say it takes three months to create a lifestyle. And then, but realistically, that's, like I said earlier, it's 12 months really. Um, but the habits, why do you do the 21 day challenges? It's to get people out of the sh- bad habits to try and create new ones. So I always say this good little, I love me, I've got this thing in my notes on my phone, lad, like anytime I get a quote or something that I like, and I hear it, I write it down, blow it on it. So like, good habits, bad habits are easy to make, good habits are easy to break. Bad habits are easy to make, good habits are easy to break. Lads, I swear it's fucking life changing stuff than you read that, you know, lads. Do you believe? It's infectious bad habits, lads. They're fucking bad. Like, it's, go on. We've all got habits, the natural, they're a natural thing to do. Yeah. Do you believe we get rid of bad habits or do you believe we just replace them? Replace them. 100%. We replace them. Hands down. Just, it's not even that they go. They, they, they don't just disappear. They can't disappear, no, can they? Can't. The way you said, everything's got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got to fucking go somewhere, so you've got to replace it with something because otherwise it'd be a void. Yeah, just in our lives. And you just, and you just sat there thinking, wow, what's going on here? Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, like it's got, you've got to do something else, lad. So, like, that, that's where like that comes into play. So, like, you've got to, you, you, let's say, like, you, you want to train more. Um, or, like, let's say, sorry, you. Like a lot of people like they got a bad habit of like fucking smoking weed or drinking or whatever. Like that habit needs to change for something positive, like going to the gym or going for a run or going walk. Gotta or swap whatever. it. Yeah, you don't just don't just go nowhere. Like you, you're fucking delusional if you think that. You know what I mean? How do you minimize yours? Your so, bad habits. So bad habits. I I I am not everyone does this lad, but like I you know when you like when you when you're doing something, and you don't really feel good about doing it, mm. but you ignore it. You know what I mean? So like, let's say like, you, 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 someone's, let's say you've got it like kids, for example, I have them, but I've got two nephews, lads, and like, they look up to me. Mm. And like, at times, um, I know they're in the house now, stairs, and I know that they'd be buzzing if I went down and played with them for half an hour or an hour. But I'll Please just sit there in them. my room watching the footy, or like, I'll sit in the other room, in the living room watching the footy, something, and I know they're there. Something inside me tells me, that I'm not doing the right thing, lads, you know what I mean? And it doesn't it's resonate intuition. with you, like, yeah, yeah, it's your intuition. So, like, my intuition guides me massively, lads. So, when I'm when I'm with my habits, bad habits and that, I try and think, like, how does that make me feel? Like, do I feel good doing this? You know what I mean? So, do you're I, consciously aware more, yeah, basically? massively, lads. I'm, I'm a very, very conscious being, lad. I'd say, like, I, other people that I know, lad, I'd say I'm in touch with the, t- the, the, the decisions that I make at every single decision. You know what I mean? So, like, if I don't... I get like another thing that you'll find, which is a sign, a symptom of you, these bad habits is, you know, if you find yourself justifying yourself. Yeah, it's a, you, you're making the wrong choices. Mads, honestly, like if you if you if you find, like someone says to you, why didn't you fucking go to the gym? And you're like, because this, 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 and then like, you just, just, that's an instant symptom of making a wrong choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, no, and knowing that yourself, but you're trying to make yourself feel better about it. You know yeah, because I mean? you're justifying yeah, it. exactly that. So like, that's, if I find myself justifying the things that I'm doing, I that's just like stop, a I just stop, lad, and just think, fucking shut up, lad. Like, another thing, like, about the excuses, lad, like, I think for any, and then I like, I think, I'm not trying to just hone in on men, but like, because I'm, I'm a man, lad, I think I can't speak for women, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, but I can say, it doesn't mean they can't take things from what I'm saying. But like in terms of like accountability for the decisions that you make. So if you fuck up, lad, you're on it. You don't sit there and tell people why you fucked up. No one cares really, bro. Like, like, no one cares no one where you're Fuck, bro. Like honestly, like, like even like right now, I was, I was on time today, wasn't I? But like, let's say I'd said, yeah, lad, I'm half an hour late because I thought something happened with my nephew and I had to pick him up or, or whatever. No, it's just my lad, fault. I'm late. Or, 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 lad, exactly. Now, even if like the things that I was saying were valid, Lad, that's just gonna go over your head, bro. Cause you don't give a fuck, cause you got your own shit to be thinking about. I just respect but more anyway. Like, look, exactly. Jack, I fucked up, lad. I'm late. Exactly, and that's all I do, lad. We were only speaking now about this today, me and Luke. If you make a mistake, lad. You just own it. You Listen, own it, lad. Everything in your life is your fault. Yeah. If it's good, it's, it's down fault. to you. Yeah, 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 if yeah. it's bad bad news for yeah, your son yeah, yeah. it's down to you yeah. and the quicker that you accept that that's when your life gets so much better 
I always say it when people, oh yeah, it was his fault. This it was his fault. Me, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? I didn't come life. because it was raining. Fuck off. Oh, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter what's going on on the external. It's you. It's the internal. It's down to you. You're big on affirmations. What are your current affirmations? How many are there? And when do you practice them? So, morning and night, reason being, right before you get, right as soon as you get up, like after that period that I mentioned in my routine in the morning, and then just before you go to bed, the reason being is because your subconscious mind is most, act- most active at those times in the day, as soon as you wake up and before you go to bed. And what your subconscious mind is, basically, for anyone who doesn't know, <clears throat> like, the point, like the fact that we're breathing here now, don't think about it, do you? You don't think about breathing. It's don't think natural. it just happens, yeah. So that's subconsciously doing things. So like, um, same thing with like, uh, you driving. You don't think about driving, do you? You just drive, don't you? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So when you tap into your subconscious mind with things, they then start to happen without you even thinking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, that's why it's important to do it at those times of day. That's proven, like, scientifically, that's when that brain, part of your brain switches on, you know what I mean? So that's when I do them. In terms of the affirmations themselves, I was just saying there um, about, like, I've got a load, probably about, like, maybe 30 or something like that, that I say religi- religiously every day. And um, one of them, basically, like, I think, would help anyone, really, lad, is, is um, my mind is bulletproof and I tackle any obstacles that come my way. The second another one, which is similar sort of um, topic, is I use fear as my friend and never shy away from anything that scares me. So what's one? Lads, swear that one, like that would second one there in particular. Um, like lads, anything that I'm scared of, bro. Like, Gotta do it. Lad, I'd run out of head on that. Like I swear, like I don't run away from fear. Like fear, like that, that it's control of you. You see what I mean? When you're scared of something and you don't want to do it, and then lad, you fully, it's fully got you by the plums, lad. You know what I mean? Like and and, and <laughs> I, like so, like I just won't have that. I won't stand for that. I mean that I'll run at anything I'm scared of head on. You might not see it. Like I might be thinking, ah, oh, fucking hell, like a little bit fearful, yeah. Like and it's good to have fear because it keeps keeps you alive, lad. Because like, you need it in terms of, like if you go back to thousands of years ago, like you needed fear to. Stop you from dying and stuff like Survival that. Survival instincts. Survival, bro. Yeah. So it's there for a reason. It's just not allowing. This is there's a saying Mike Tyson, um, but I think it comes from his coach Customato. Says he is um, your, your friend. Um, it says you like, like you can a use it to your fire, like a fire. You can either burn you, or you can use it to your advantage. And cook on you. Cook on stuff exactly that. Yeah, it is. It's. Um it, it, fear is your friend, and you've just got to know how to use it. And you've got. We've all got fear. But it's how you act when it kicks in as well. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean. And it's fight or flight. And can you control it? Your sympathetic it? nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. So the two scientific things, like what, what, when, when they both kick in in different times. So like, like when, let's say, someone fucking wants wants to straighten away you or something like that, or a fight or whatever, and the the you run or do you fucking do you go do you go all in? You fight know what I mean? Flight. Yeah, that's it. That's so some people run, some people go all in. I'm I'm not I'm the guy that goes all in me that I'm not shitting on people We're that going don't all that that that's like I'm I'm whether I regardless of how that makes me feel that I'm 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 you're at there's a saying that with like it's always good with fighting like to use it you're either getting in or you're getting out you know what mm. I mean you're getting in or you're getting out bro and I'm getting in me lads you know what I mean like like I'm not I won't run away I from that one, bro that's it lads you know what I'm saying <laughs> um, anything I don't want to do. I need to do more of. I fucking love that attitude. I love it. Attitude's everything. And yours is infectious. You're very driven. Um, I seen you do a post on social media and it read, A man who is full does not understand the wants of a man who is hungry. And this is the hungriest I've ever been. Being hungry lights a fire in you like nothing else can. Where does your drive and hunger come from? What's your why, Joseph? So... Why that is, I've always wanted to be a person like, like, or like a type of like the guy that like people can depend on, like someone, who, someone who, like you, you, like if you've got a problem, that's I'm the man you go to, you know what I mean? Like that's the type of person I wanted to be. That bit, like, I wanted to be, I wanted to be able to say to me mum and dad, don't worry about that, I'll sort that. You know what I mean? Or like. If like my sisters had a problem, I say that don't worry, I, I, if I'll take you there or I'll, whatever. Or like even just like the same thing with friends and stuff. It's not always materialistic things. It's just like being that type of person 
that like no matter what happens that I'm the I'm the shoulder that you lean on you know what I mean? oh, so like, yeah lads so it's like I, I think like that I wanted to be someone who, who people could lean on not the one leaning you know what I mean so like my why is creating that person every single day to like to to like the biggest tasks that I do so like being being someone who's like say like uh, some like no, me mum and dad like for example love, love the bones and um, and like I've stepped up to a point now where like as well, my dad <laughs> probably wouldn't agree like but I know like, like I, I've stepped up to being the man of the house now in a lot of ways and it's not because he's not he's very very he is to a degree but like I've got a massive uh, responsibility to my family to to be someone that they can depend on when when times are hard. Like, like that, that's why I want. That's my why, bro. That's like I want to be some of my friends, my family, my girlfriend, anyone can come to with a problem and I'll sort it. You know what I mean? That, that's like a, that's powerful stuff for me. That, that's very you know. powerful stuff, brother. Do you like adversity? I like it. It's a love hate relationship, lads. <laughs> just, just, yeah, I'll be phrased the question. Do you thrive there? Um, yeah, 100%. Lads. I was like, I've done a post yesterday and I was like, I was made in the fire, me lad. Like that person, this character, the person you're speaking to now, was made in, in the fire, bro. Like like the fire of like the hard work. Like when I you just step into that, I was in a big fucking burning building, lad. That's where I was made. Where everything, everything that I've like I've, I've, I've sort of came to today, the person who I am today, that's where I thrive. So when I'm at me, when I'm at me fucking breaking point, lad, that's where you'll see the best me. You know what I mean? the Joe in the bank. Met the job today. What? Lad, he'd say who the fuck that Two guy. Lad, people. you know what I mean? He'd say like who, who, who are you? Lad, it's like, like Goggins and David. Yeah, lad, that he's all. Lad, Two different me, people. Lad, honestly, like it's it's funny, lad, because I think if that that if that could actually do that, go back and then go, go forward and meet the two people, lad, you'd just be like, what? Who the fuck is this? Is that me? Like, like it's like me in five years, and what? That, like, what you couldn't? I couldn't even fathom it at the time. You know what I mean? Mm. Um. But then, like I said, there was a very, very small part of me that me- not necessarily would think that I'm like this person I am now, but there's something in me that I knew I was going to do something great. Like, I, I swear, like, I've, 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 I knew, lads, like, I've said it since like, I was about eight, lads. I said do you think you've found it? Yeah, lads, I've found it. You haven't done it, I but haven't you've, you've, you've found, found the pathway yeah. to, to, to lead you to where you, you, you were going. That's 100%, I think, like, with, with Srevfast, what it's done for me, lad, it's made, it's given me that, that, that process of, like, this is what it's going to, this is what's going to give me that path to to do what I want to do with my life. Lad, honestly, I said this here before the podcast started, lad, and it's not for me own ego, I'm not saying it, but one day, bro, like, so Joe Rogan's going to be interviewing Joe Rogan. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I can't wait for, like, when it happens, lad, because... Yeah, yeah, lad. Because you can go back to this video, you can go back to this video, lad, like, that, that, that's where, like, I, I think it's my life going, lad, and, and it, when I get there... I could speak on things into existence, lad, and then it happened. It's fucking crazy, but it's unbelievable stuff to feel and it's that self in yourself, bro. You know what I mean? You say you're gonna do something, lad, then you go and do it. It's a great takes a great deal of confidence to say stuff like that out loud as well, don't it, Joe? Like yeah. obviously, podcast goes out to everybody who who, who wants to watch it. Yeah. It's available to everyone, and for you to have the confidence to sit there and say, you know, you will see me on Joe Rogan, yeah. and uh, just shows how much you've grown as a person. Do you, do you use the steadfast me- mythology with your personal clients? Is it more um, client specific and tailored to their needs? What's the situation there with your personal trainer? So, yeah, so or I don't do any other personal trainers in like all, all of it's steadfast related. So, like all the workouts are basically workouts that I've done. And then I put them through it like within that following day or days, um, depending on who we've got in and what days and stuff like that. So, like, I'll, I'll do a session with. I'll do a session myself, see how I feel off it. So I'll know when it's hard and when it's not. Yeah, but not yeah. hard, it's always hard, but I'll know when you'll get a little bit of respite in terms of like more, more rest than others, or where you should take a little slight break, or where you should push it more, or like when you feel proper fuck, fucked, you know what I mean? So like the fact that I do that, I'm embodying what they're going to be doing. Yeah. So I know I'm the best person to judge, right? That weight's probably a little bit too heavy for you to take go down, or maybe, you know what, you can push it to take go down. increase this. Yeah, yeah. So like, like that's why I think it's brilliant, lads, because again, it's that same thing about before. I'm not telling people to do something I'm not prepared to do myself. You know what I mean? How long does a workout last, Joe? 45, 45 minutes, minutes to an hour. All my PT sessions are 45 minutes, but the online program's an hour. Now, that's just because of time. Like I want to, I can still get a phenomenal workout in with my clients within 45 minutes. 
and it's because my schedule's that tight. I haven't got time to be doing an hour session every day, you know, for different people. Um, I started on one to ones, and I've sort of I still do the odd few, but now I mainly focus on group sessions. Now, me glad to be honest, like got to the point where like again, like t- time is a valuable commodity, lad, and like it's times more, money exactly about times money. So like I want to mitigate wasting time. It's not wasting it because I know it's still help, but think about it on a bigger scale. So like. I can do a one-to-one with one person, help them quite a lot. Or I can do a session with 10 people and help 10 people. Mm. That That's for me, personally. I have different reasons for both, by the way. But for me, I, I'd rather go in the right side and side direction with that, you know what I mean? Help the 10 people within that instance, provided they know what they're doing and they're comfortable and stuff like that. Um, and then that that's where I've sort of drifted towards now. suppose everyone's getting the same way out as well, in the way of, like, I don't know, if you're holding pads for someone, it's a personal training exactly. session, like, then they're getting Except a 45 very minutes. Unique, you know, but yeah. it's like, if... if, if, if if me and you were training together, or say Luke was training me, and I was hitting pads, I'm getting the full 45 minutes. If you come with me, we're splitting that time yeah, between yeah, us. Yeah. But obviously, if we're doing a steadfast workout, the pair of us are banging the workout yeah, out yeah. anyway, so That's it doesn't really matter. Like He's there in front of us, and the two of us are doing our thing. You need equipment. You need two kettlebells, because like, for just to give you an example, let's say I give you 40 minutes to go to do like 500 reps or five different exercises. Let's say five exercises. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were a beginner, I'd just say, do the favour, just half those reps. Now, it'll probably take you the same time as someone who isn't a beginner. But it's so just but you're going to finish at the same time. It's just as efficient. You're still getting an unbelievable workout in until you get to the point where you increase the volume. Then when you increase the volume and you feel like it's getting better, you then increase the weight. So it's a never-ending thing. So like, Yeah, it's, it's infinite. 45 minutes. Is that 45 minutes intense from start yeah. to finish? Oh, yeah, bang, yeah, yeah. we're on. Yeah, I'm a fire. So that's when people say the warm-ups. Just like, they've got fucking hours at the warm-ups. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> this, the, the, yeah, like that, that's what we're about. I was said in the class, yeah, yesterday when I'm full of like fucking testosterone and that lad and like I'm just angry like because like I said my personality um I always say to people um like about like basically like, I, I I say in the class of going look if you want a mediocre workout you can go fucking somewhere else yeah. you said you want to you want to work hard this is this is the home hard work this is what I say about our gym like that, that this is like where, that, where you graft want to graft this is where you go if you want a mediocre workout where you just do a bit of push and pull fuck off go somewhere else mm. and like I say that politely I say it politely but it's, it's, I'm just being real lad you know what well, do you know what that's going to get you the right clients as well because look if you, if that's not for you then go somewhere else yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not being nasty yeah, it's just being yeah. honest it's yeah, being yeah, transparent yeah, yeah. if you want to work hard let's fucking work here if you don't think, go yeah. somewhere lad, else you think that sometimes they'll think because the way the mindset might be or whatever and think that's fucking too hard that no, go, no, it's as hard as you want to make it. They're not the right people no, for you no, either, Joe. No, do you know what I mean? Right it's, like, right. it's, it's, it's different horses for courses. People will say, like, with Goggins and that, you know what I mean? Where he's like, you know, stay hard and all that. And that <laughs> yeah. people are like, oh, he's too intense. No, no, he's too no, no. But then he's not for you, yeah, but he's for me. There's, yeah, there's yeah. an audience for everyone, isn't he? Yeah, That's 100%. Yeah, and you just got to have, have it for the right audience, the right people. Um, if someone wants to train with you, how do they go about it? Can they train with you? Have you got any availability? Someone wants to come in with your job? I have dependence on a few things, really, lad. So what I usually do is, like, let's say, like, you're I want to Joe blogs, Joe blogs, and wants to wants to get in, and like, got to be in work at a certain time, and like, they need to get in at half six in the morning. As you can probably appreciate that like, a lot of people Everybody. want to have six blows so like that's the time slot in it so, so they're all the more so the groups so what I tend to do is I find the time where they can do a few one to ones I get them up to speed with the technique then once we're confident that we're okay then I integrate them into the groups at the time that they initially asked for so the first few sessions are generally not in sync with what the permanent time frames will be it's just to get you up to speed and then once I feel like you're up to speed in terms, it's all technique related. This one I'm talking about because I wouldn't want someone diving in that wouldn't be fair. On yeah, the, you and know you've what got I mean? the wrong. Yeah, so like you can't also let like, your attentions discipline the dissected into different people, isn't it? Because you there's ten people there, so like you can't hone in on one person because the other person's not getting a good way out. Then are they? So and I'm very big on that. So value for money, you know what I mean? So like I'll I'll get people in on that basis, and like let's say you say a time that I've got available, for example, like at the moment only have a few days like four o'clock and stuff like that i can probably get some one or two people in depending on the day um but i have got availability there um i think it just depends on those factors really and, and just I, I, I think some depends on your own circumstance you can a lot of people get thingy because they do shifts as well they think that i can't get them in because they do shifts and like nah because like, i do my rotor every week every sunday i spend two and a half hours doing my rotor for what 
I've got planned that entire week. Proper organization freak lad. Like I think it's 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 like I'll spend I'll put all my PTs in, I'll put all my sessions in that I'm planning on doing as in like me me training sessions, I'll put all my meetings that I've got in. Got like a personal like calendar that I made and stuff like that. Are you reading my notes here? Joe? <laughs> <laughs> he's got a good eyesight in man, and he's fucking reading all my notes, you know. <laughs> uh, we'll jump to that then. Structured and organisation are massive, and I think being organised is underrated. I hear a lot about other topics, a lot of convos about other topics, but organisation doesn't really get enough air time, and I think it's key to any busy schedule. Well, it is key. Um, do you prioritise being organised? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I've always been like that. Like I, I, even in my other job, I think with more um, responsibility, it forces you to. Because like I've got fifty odd clients, and I've got um, this is in person clients, and mm-hmm. I've got um, uh, twenty odd staff that I've got to look after who run the who work in the gym. Sorry, and then I've got obviously the team that we work for that does the that's so twenty odd staff just in the gym, and then I've got more staff in terms of the set co- fast coaches. So lads, there's probably nearly 100 people dependent on answers from me, you know what I mean? And then in between all that, obviously, I help Luke significantly. So for me not to be organised, that is just asking for fucking serious problems, bro. Like, and like, like, I think that's why I, I have to be so very regimented with me, with me time frames and like, and like being so particular about like, I can't waste time doing this, don't work, like, do this, do that, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I learned all these skills from the bank though. So like, I was, I was, um, I used to might be like a supplier manager. Or to pl- I'd manage like 15 different suppliers. So like, they'd all have fucking problems all the time and they'd be coming to me and like, and like I had to sort of work how to, I'd, I'd can't use my calendar well and stuff like that and like, took those skills. At the time, lads, you don't think they're important. No, bro, but it's a transfer of so, oh, skills. Lads, honestly, like, even just like, managing the gym, like cash flow and stuff like that and I learned all that in the bank. So I took all these skills and then- Transferred them. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So like, in terms of organization, this is a saying, lad. Fortune favours the prepared mind. So, basically saying, if you're not prepared, lad, the opportunities won't come. And if they do, you won't be ready. Exactly. So, and then that's Preparation why... Preparation needs to meet opportunities. I'm saying this to um, one of the lads, Carl, he's just started on the team as a PT, and he's, he's proper at the ground running. And, like, he's flying and buzzing for him. And um, he's got loads of clients. But I've noticed, is, um, and he won't mind me saying, uh, his organisation's not the best. And I said, lad, you're at the ceiling with where you can go with this right now because your organisation hasn't improved. So, like, until you prepare it better and organise better, y- y- your situation's not going to get better, lad. You know what I mean? Like, um, like and he's, he's totally, he's, he took action on that. You know what Sometimes I mean? you'd even need to take a little small bit of time out yeah. just to get yourself sorted. Yeah. And then you, you're good to go and just stay in that rhythm because... Yeah. Well, it's helped him, though, because he's, he's listened to what I've said and he's taught, put it into practice and he's significantly better than he was now. And like now that he's now realizing how much time that he's probably because of that organization, he's gonna get more clients now. Do you know what I mean? So like, like it was coming from a good place when I was saying it to him. You know what I mean? Constructive criticism. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we all need that sometimes, don't yeah, we, Joe? Definitely. I think it's uh, these things. Like, like it's all stuff that Luke said to me. Do you know what I mean? And, like I'm just transferring advice down. To down the line. Like, do you know what I mean? Are you strong enough to let things go? What don't serve you? Like whether that be. Um, something in your life you know do you understand what I'm trying to say yeah, so yeah, yeah, if you've yeah. got so, so many like things on but it's like well I can't do some people just don't realise that you can't do everything and it's making that decision to be strong enough to say do you know what I can't do everything and this, this and this is going to suffer I've got to let that go or, or, yeah. or make a decision are you no, strong enough to do that job me, yeah 100% lad I think what it was like so my, I was it's a bit like, funny lad to be honest me and Luke always laugh about it no, in hindsight but I was, I was still am lad, big Everton fan, fucking love Everton lad, like always have, and, um, and I used to spend my weekends, obviously like going to, watch, and I was, like, going to watch them and that, and um, I remember I'd come in on us because we're shit lad, and I'd come in on a Monday. Best thing you've said the whole podcast, <laughs> that's a good real match. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd come in on a Monday, and um, we'd be fucking tonked on the weekend lad probably, <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I'd say to Lou, fuck, my week, my weekend was ruined there, mate, blah, blah. This is years ago now. And then he'd go to me, hey, he said to me once, and I just stuck with me, lad, and changed me fucking life, to be honest. And, and not my really life, but changed me. Your to, outlook. Uh, outlook to a degree. He just said, hey, your weekend's getting ruined by a load of grown fellas running around the fucking pitch. 
said, you know how much of a fucking loser you sound like? And he said, and then he said, then I was just thinking, and I'm not shitting on people that like no, footy lads, no. but lads, no. honestly, I was so emotionally invested in yeah, everything, yeah. lads. I used to go and the whole whole process of coming home miserable on that. I'd be fucking gutted and then and then like and I just I just let it go, lad. I just like didn't save me anymore. Still watch them by the way, lads. Yeah, I want them to just do well. But lad, if I don't if I don't if I miss a game, lad, or I fucking know to get beat, lad, I couldn't give a fuck. Yeah, you know because I mean? it's just like oh yeah, can't like, let it affect you. No, lad, I think that that was a good example based off what you were saying. Just lad. keeping things on yeah. the outer, not letting yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah. And think if like, if if it's not it's not helping me, lad, then it was having an adverse effect on me, lad. You know what I mean? What are your views on boundaries? It can be hard to say no to people, can't it? Yeah, I think um I think what I'm trying to get better with, so I've been with girlfriend a few years now and like fucking she had a massive, massive part to play in, in the man I am today. That's like I think um for a lot of reasons. I think that she stopped me doing making poor She's decisions. not a very good camera woman, no, <laughs> is she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was funny that video that I uh, lad, we, as much as we pick her like fuck sometimes, I think any any couple does that you don't want to be she, she's um she's I think like from in a lot of ways, lad, she um, she protects me like spiritually, lad. She fucking she, she loves the bones of me, lad, and vice versa, and, and she looks out for me in a lot of ways like that. I think because her intentions are like proper set out on, on me me doing well and and and, and helping uh, us to make a life. You know what I mean? So in terms of going back to what you asked about the boundaries and stuff like that, I haven't always been great at saying no. So but I've also tried to take on too much. So like. I've, what I'll try and do is I'm very work orientated as you have probably appreciate based off the conversation we've had and like my work takes precedence a lot of the time now I'll still say it yet to things that she wants to do with me and my friends as well and then eventually that something just fucking falls by the wayside and it's usually something with her to be fair which isn't fair on her lad you know what I mean so like not always here by the way lad it can be anything but like, like my biggest problem lad is because I've got all these stuff that I've got to look after I'll be having this going for a meal over there and I'll be on my phone messaging them about something, lad, and like say proper ones are open and I kind of fully understand where she's coming from, you know what I mean? Because I just cause I'm trying to I'm the same. time doesn't stop for no man, lad, you know, and it's all like it's still where like the businesses are still gonna run with it, blah blah, but it's not an excuse though. I think what, what I'm trying to get better with is saying keeping them boundaries and like I time need to delegate, delegation. Yeah, lad, yeah, delegate times for the right things, as in like like when a when I know, like, right, this is the time that I'm going to segregate to doing this. So, like, if I've got something planned, I just fucking try and leave my phone to one side, you know what I mean? Unless it's something really important that needs the dressing there and then. Then, yeah. then I think, and I'm getting better with it, lad, yeah. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? No, lads, 100%. I think it's a, there's a, there's a saying, lads, the man who tries to catch two rabbits catches nada. man who chases two rabbits catches nada. So basically, if you're trying to dip your toe into two different things, bro. I yeah, like that one. Lad, swear, lad, you, 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 something's going to give, lad. You know what I mean? So um, I think fucking, I think with, with, with that, I'm trying to get better with it, like, but I'm not having cracked it quite perfectly. It's a work in process, isn't it? Progress. 100%. What do you like to do in your spare time? You don't have much of it, do you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was saying it to someone. So I had it for about, about a year. I had a, a, maybe a little bit longer. I was working seven days a week. Um, not 16 hour days. I'd say five of those days out of the seven were 16 hour days. And then the other two were like maybe five hour days. And just knowing you had to be somewhere all the time, like just proper fucking Too training, much. lad. You know what I mean? Like, even though like I'm big on weight, like, and that, and like, but not having like any time to do anything yourself isn't really like, isn't healthy, lad. You know what I mean? However, I feel like that me going through that process was necessary because I had to pay me dues, lad, you know what I mean? So going back to what your question was, in terms of my spare time now, so every Saturday after I've done my clients in the morning, you work an hour on a Saturday now in the morning at seven AM and then I'll train myself and the rest of the day is mine really essentially. Um so I like to big on footy, lad, I love footy. I just I'll watch any game of footy, me lad. Fucking I'll be very day to <laughs> love a good yeah. game at all yeah, myself. Same lad and um I'd say, like, in terms of, I just like being with my mates, you know, bro, like, my mates and my, my, my missus and that, that thing, like, 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 I feel like you get different things from different people in terms of, like, I think 
obviously that should be a given like but your, your relationship with your beards different to your relationship with your friends it's not like being with the boys that's no Andrew no it's Tate, not, it's uh, not Andrew, Andrew Tate's perfect example of that and he's like he just said there's something like being with the boys the, that, that camaraderie and you yeah, get a buzz from yeah, it lad, lad, don't like, you like, me and Luke lad when me and him was together lad they just fucking have a laugh lad you know what I mean some people as well love work Do you know when you turn around and said like you know um, it's not healthy it's not healthy when you're working 24 7 but like Alex almost he said like who's another Don like he loves to grind all day and then he'll sit there in the night time and he'll watch Netflix for two hours and then he'll go to bed and he'll wake up and do the same thing again yeah, yeah. and people say that's not healthy but he's like define healthy it's healthy for me because yeah, that's works. what I love to do yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. love to spend my time Lad. on where somebody else who'd be like you're working way too much you're working way too hard but he's very very successful and he's very happy with what he's doing so just because that fits for him it doesn't mean it doesn't fit for me or it does fit yeah. for me it's that it's fine and what works for you like, and being you know, happy with it so the answer to that then for me is what i'd say a perfect day off for me would be would be i'd wake up go to the gym train come on a saturday we're talking here yeah, just come home um what put got to a few bets on the footy um not, not on mad lads it's about 25 a bit, quid a bit of incest a bit yeah. of incest lad yeah um, go to bookies do that go home put the 3 o'clock games on so I have 12 3 o'clock 5 5 just chill and watch all that all day lad that's a perfect thing perfect maybe if, I'm, if I want to have a, want to have a bit of bad food lad order the Chinese or something like yeah, that you need but that in your like life one little one day a week lad I don't beat myself up over the bro like, and that, no, that you can't happy. Yeah. I just like chill like because I work so hard lad through the week it all sound like a fucking ass. It's just like I, I just want to chill out on the weekend, me bro. I just want to do nothing, lads. It's understandable. Yeah, it's it's understandable. I want to touch on with you. With, with I don't think a lot of people really talk about this that much. So just something I want to ask you before we go. Sleep. What's your views on it and rest? Because like I see a lot of online influencers now and stuff yeah. like that, and they're like, oh, you can sleep when you're dead, or you know what I mean, Let, you know, and everyone's so big on, 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 on grinding and whatever else, and yeah, I'm with that, yeah, 100%, but we do need rest, don't we, oh, that's very, very important. 100%, so what I'd say to you about the answer to what you're saying is, so there's two ways to look at this, so if you go to bed late, so like I'm very big on not rushing, lad, good bit of advice just to anyone to take from this, like now, like, you get up in the morning, you're rushing, like your day is gonna be fucking chaos. Swear. So like if it means me being tired and getting up early and not rushing, I will hundred percent fucking do that. Like now, that then is your own fault because you should have went to bed earlier, for example. But in terms of rest itself, it's as long as you people aren't prepared to go to bed at half eight that you know what I mean? Quarter past eight, lad, I'm a I'm away, lad. I'm a, I'm, I'm a kid, bro, and it's because of no something the next day will, will, will fall by the wayside now I'm still getting six odd hours in so the answer to your question is I wouldn't I'd go tired if it meant it was going to have an adverse effect on my day however that then makes me reanalyse what has happened to make me be tired so I'd be like right well, you fucked, up. fucked up somewhere lad haven't you so like you, 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 like lads even just on Monday lads like not really like me at all watch the Evan game do one one with Palace and I fucking stayed up to watch it um, I like I say, lad, finished at ten o'clock. It's not late to some people. That but lads, but late to, to me. You, that yeah, ball, yeah. You've went so, past like, it. I was thinking the next day, like even this, uh, this is a good example of how I haven't cried. Like, I, I say like, I'm, I'm living a lot of this time, ninety nine percent of the time. But there's the odd time where like I then have to be. Uh, you know uh, that's just that's that's like that's being honest, and yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. nobody in this world that don't care who you are or who you confess to be. It, it, it's. You can't live. Yeah. You were not robots. Sometimes these bad things that happen, they reaffirm what you know already. You know what I mean? So like, why we why we waking up a bit tired? I was fucking saying to myself, "Fuck that, mate." I mean, if I'm doing that again, do you know what I mean? I was doing yeah, but lad, like at the Palace games, are you going to bed at ten o'clock on a pack of the chocolate buns? This is a <laughs> mad <laughs> night out. <laughs> I know that. I know. You know I know that. So it's it's, it's, it's not bad, bad in the grand scheme of things, lad. Is it? <laughs> Like, <laughs> if anything, I was just more annoyed with myself because I wasn't as, as energetic for my clients at 5am, you on it, which is like, again, but again, like I said, I'm not going to fucking dwell on it too much because I know 99% of the time I'm good. good. It's balance, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to get balance. Who are your role models? Who inspire you? So, I'm going to name, I'm going to name just two people, lad. And and it's, what two, yeah, two people, lad, I'd say, um, one someone I don't know, someone I do know. 
So, David Goggins is the one I don't know. But I will meet that man one day. I don't want to fucking shake his hand, lad, because he's had such a massive he's effect a legend, on, me, on me life, lad. Like, I, lad, I used to play videos of him on repeat, lads, when I'd be doing my workouts and I'd just listen he's to things better, saying. I prefer to listen to someone like Goggins or sort of yeah. motivational and music yeah, when I'm lad, working Yeah, same, out. same. On every one, I'd just yeah. play it on repeat. When I do like a workout in the gym by myself, I'll just listen to it on my earphones, just whatever, he's just shouting <laughs> pure fucking motivation, sick. Him, he's biggest, one of the biggest role models for me, and someone I know. Lad, you know, what I'm gonna say that Luke. It's gotta he's be. Fucking, he's the man. Lad, he's, he's told me what it's what it takes to be a man. He's lived and breathed. He's been by my side when I've been up, when I've been down, and uh, he's, he's say like, like in terms of like what what the, the representation of what he what 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 one of my good models should be. Lad, he he's shown me that way. Lad, 100. John, this conversation, John, you think you're a credit to him and you're a credit to Steadfast, lad. Let's touch on healing well being heal well being. Uh, it's a fantastic space where the stair classes are held and lots of other well being activities. Can we just touch on that just a minute? I just want to Yeah, yeah. So so go. the gym, um heal well being, it's Luke's gym and we offer stair fast classes in the gym as well as yoga. Um we've got saunas, ice baths, um in a hot the classes are in a hot room so like it's like a heated room essentially so it makes the workout are hard already yeah it makes them hard yeah, yeah. Like i'm talking i'm not talking like a little bit of heat like it can go up sometimes up to like 40 odd degrees wow. and like it's 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 lads it's the people that walk out that the, the numbers speak for themselves we're getting like nearly 90 people in one class so like like that's that's optimal at the moment and that's because this you can't fit no more space. yeah yeah so like we've, we've had two two classes two classes a day really or one, one on some one on some other days like weekends and stuff like that and um yeah lad, there's a real boom for it at the minute everyone loves it it's just it's where about is it so it's just off great cross all street um anyone who's in liverpool is just a bit by the john moore's university um just up by the old flyover used to be opposite that um, but yeah, that's where it is. It's a, uh, it's, it's taking the city by storm, and just like steadfast is with the world. Uh. Someone wants to do steadfast or wants to uh, come down to heal well-being. What do they do? Do they jump online? Who do they reach so out they can, to? They How do they just, go? So they go onto the heal well-being website, and there's a timetable for classes. So generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend just showing up, but uh, yeah. <laughs> We always try and make room, lads, you know, it's so like, yeah. it, it, if someone's showing up without knowing that they don't, that they should probably book it online, they can, so you can make an account on the website, and you can pay for a drop-in, so it means you just drop in for that one class, yeah. you've got your space reserved, then that would be, I would say, do it, rather than just turning up, because we don't, we don't really knock people back, but it's just, but ideally, we don't want to be, like, this play here, we've been transparent, but yeah, we've had that 90 people isn't the, isn't the best amount, because it's, You'd have to change some exercises and stuff like that because it does not the space, yeah. space. But like in terms of like the other like the lower numbers when people have booked on, we've been a bit more strict with it. It's um you get a better better, better experience, workout. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's so well, that's just me being honest. You that's know crazy, mean? though, isn't it? Ninety people like at one time <laughs> in a class, and it's and you just could have more, and you <laughs> we can't we can't can't, can't, have, can't, can't facilitate it with so a yeah. space that big. Ninety yeah, people's a big crazy, space, isn't it? Um, big, most popular gym in the city. That fans down. I'd, uh, I'll start, I know for a fact it is. So, like, uh, any any competitors like, who are listening to this, like, yeah, we're already beating you, lah. So, like, it's, it's, just, it's just one of them. That, that's, my, that's my opinion. Yeah, let's talk about goal setting. Do you write your goals down? Do you have small goals and big goals? How do you work that, Joe? How do you sort your goals out? So, I think I've got this big whiteboard in my room. Me. Like, it's, it's probably like uh, that size, like that size take up a good proportion of that wall that's yeah. and um and i've got like sections on it with like headings of like for example physical set saying things i want to be by the end of the year so like i want to have a certain 5k time i want to weigh a certain weight i want to have a certain baby arm wrap time that i mentioned earlier i want to be um certain plank times things like that um, so there are things I want to read every day. I think that's something I go towards and work towards, you know what I mean? Um, then obviously you break that down. How do you then go about getting closer to those? That then comes a lot more specific. It's not on the board, but I know what I need to be doing. As in like, I need to do two zones, two runs a week to increase my 5k time. 
I need to do my burpee arm around once every couple of weeks. I need to time my strength test a few times a week. Do um, you know what I mean? So, uh, all a couple of times a month, sorry. So, so these, that's where you get a bit more specific with it. And then I've got other ones, other headings for like, big thing for me, lad, is like, well, I'm not, that's not, not my strong point, lad, is communication. As in like, I'm good at communicating because I'm a confident so speaker, not. lad. So like, it, I can't, it's not that I can't speak to people or not. It's just like, I, I, I'm very, I probably haven't maybe appeared to be like this in this podcast, but I can be very passive aggressive. So like, I need to channel that emotion the right way sometimes. So building, building better relationships through communicating better with people, uh, people, around, people yeah. around me. Like they say, don't they? You'll always hate the people you love the most. Mm. And like, and, and like, like my mum, for example, I fucking love her. And like, she, I told you earlier, she works with the fucking ground to walk on. And like, I'll snap at her at times, lad, and it's not something I'm not proud of it, lad. So, like, I feel like if I had everyone in the world, lad, she fucking loved us the most for me and loves the ones of me. And, like, I, and, and, like at times, I don't, um, I don't reciprocate that when I should. So, like, one of the big, big point me for me this year is, is, is being trying to be better as, like, as, as a, as a, in terms of how we communicate with people and thinking of taking a step back rather than just reacting, rather than like reacting bad for reacting, you know what I mean? Which is a, a big, big problem. So the way the way I'm doing that is just, just trying to step, take a step back after every come before I go in head first with a, with a, with a response, do you know what I mean? Yeah, just self-improvement. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of goals, going back to what you asked, I think you, I, I'd recommend anyone get a, like a whiteboard in, in somewhere that they're going to be in every day, whether it's the work or the home or whatever. Do you put like financial goals on yeah, there, sense. travel goals on so there? That, I had a target this year for like my social media following, um, and it was like it was, like, it was 20k. So like, Trebled it. I had to put in Feb, and I'm, I'm on fucking 66 or something like that. So I'm about to have to change that now, lad. <laughs> um, We're going but, for the under, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aim for the moon, lad. Aim for the stars, and you might reach the moon, yeah, lad. You're yeah. not done too bad, lad, have you? No. So, uh, just stuff like that, same financially. Um, multiple streams of income. That That's something that I'm aiming to work this year. Yeah, yeah. Things like that, lad, really. Um, yeah, I think that seeing it every day, lad, just remind you, yeah, like, that's a target I need to work towards. And then at the end of the year, when you look at it, um, you think if, if you've achieved it you feel proud if you haven't you need to do more then don't you yeah you, you need mean? to break it down into segments as well because yeah. the year goes by fast so yeah. it's like yeah well, how have I done this month or what, how am I gonna, what am I going to put into play for next month to, yeah, yeah. to actually um, reach that goal um, let's do a little fast 10 before we go yeah man it's a bit of fun isn't it yeah, it's a bit more like that other than that one book to change your life only have one Four agreements. Seen a post of that with like lad. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Two favourite foods. Oh, lad. Favourite foods, la. You pick two. It's gonna have to be bad ones though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Happy dish. You'd be yeah. getting thrown out, lad. If the dish is yeah, not on it. Food, lad. <laughs> Are you talking specific food or is gen general art? So like cho- I love what chocolate, it? lad. Like, like, chocolate. Not, yeah, chocolate, bro, and like Love Chinese food, lad. Yeah, I love it, lad. Both proper and healthy. Food. Chocolate over crisp as <laughs> well, lad. I'm a PT, lad. I love me chocolate, me <laughs> Chinese food, lad. I don't like three reasons to work out. Your family, my own mind, clarity, and the last one. To inspire people, lad, to be honest. That's what I'd say those three things. Definitely the first two in particular, lad. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? <sighs> lad, I got this. I've had some good advice, lad, and a lot of it's come off Luke. But I wanted to say this one, like, because it's always stuck out with me, lad. And, like, what is the brush? So, my physio said it to me once. I had a few injuries the last couple of years, and, um, she just said to me, like, what's the rush job? And I was just thinking, like, what is the rush like? Like, you should do everything to your best ability, of course, but, like, if something's not happening exactly how you want it to right now, what's the rush? You know what I mean? Like, it's some of the greatest things in life that people achieve, lad, they don't achieve until later in life. Can't rush it. Ah, oh, can't be rushed, lad. Lad, it can't be rushed, exactly, lad. Warren Buffett and then his fucking thing he tell he was like he's the so however old he was, you know what I mean? All like, good things take time. Hundred percent, bro. What's one thing on your bucket list you haven't done yet? 
Maar ze kunnen dat maar nou. Ja, yeah, nou, dat is een ding. Ik heb een het list. Het zei. Ik wil het zeggen, too laat ik het zeggen. Ik wil 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 het zeggen. Wat de fuck is dat? Wat de fuck is dat? Wat de fuck is dat? Je favoriete spot in de city? Van hem bij Palmwoods, bro. Palmwoods, laat eens wat magic hebben over dat. Je nog wel eens volgen, volgen de dag. Je volgen de dag door, hè? Dat is aan. Dat is like get a lot of like, just like to, to, just to, just like cause it's quite space. quiet in the inside the trees. Laat eens just like I just like looking up, just thinking, laat eens walking around, just thinking. It's a space, lad, yeah, isn't it? Probably my favorite place daar. A good night in or a boss night out? A good night in. It's 100% lad. That being said though, I think like I've had some unbelievable nights out with my mates lad and I wouldn't, wouldn't say to sit here and lie to you. It's, it's just again comes down to that balance thing, very few and far between. But when I do I have a great time. But I think the, a good night in, it makes you appreciate the good nights out. You know what I mean? Vice versa. Yeah, vice versa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sachis or jeans. Sachies, lad. 100%. My man. Yeah. And then, um, what's one thing you've always wanted to learn, but haven't you? Different language. Spanish, Spanish. probably. Yeah, man. Therefore, that's one thing I haven't done that I said to myself I'm going to do this year. Yeah. Great language I've to learn as well. Space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, lad, we'll be have this podcast in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, bro. Um, would you like to do a shout out to anybody before we go? So... Big shout out. So, be family, thanks. friends, sponsors, anything at all, lad. If you want to do a shout out to anyone, if you want to plug so anything at I'm all. I'm just going to do a shout out. I think I've shouted out so I just read fast itself to him, like as much as I need to, really. But it's all separate to that. Just going to do a big, um, big shout out to uh, a lad called Harrison Sutton, who works on our team. Um, he's, he's a fucking credit to his family. And just to, to, to the kid, he is, he's like, he's, mate, he's only young, lad, he's only 21. And he's, uh, I'm not old by the way, but uh, he's, he's like, he's made everyone on our team step up. And he's just like, well, he's only just started. So like, and like, he's, he's a credit to himself. So I wanted to give him a big shout out. Got a big future. Yes, 100%. That's, Luke, Luke gave me, said to me, see this advice that I'm giving you years ago. He said, when the time comes, someone comes in and then they need this advice, you need to give it to them. So then, like, Addison is that guy. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Lad. Talk him under me wing. You know what I mean? I'm fucking going to help him as much as I can. As well as the rest of the team, by the way. Is but there anybody else? Uh, probably Carl as well, lad. Like, for Carl, Carl's my boy, lad. He's started when he's very new in the team. Um, he's what you call, he's, he's, he's again. At again, I, I'm not, pim- I think everyone in the team is great, lad. It's, I'm not trying to sound in on people, but if you ask me the question, like, I want to give him a shout out as well because he's at the ground bro, and he's got so much potential. And like, I can see how much he wants it, lad. Mm. I can see, lad, there's a fucking fire burning in them both, you know what I mean? And like, I said, lad, like, people like that, lad, I just gravitate toward them. Just like, yeah, I'll do everything in my power to help you. Help you. You know what I mean? Because that's what Luke did to me. And you're just yeah, giving back now. Yeah, lad, you've got to. You've got to, bro. Like, you don't, that's, don't, don't fucking be kid, kid yourself, lad, that you can't help people, lad. You know what I mean? Like, because you've fucking got to where you want to be. That's you get more pleasure out of, out of giving yeah. than receiving, don't you? 100%. That's what it's all about, life, lad. That's helping other people, bro. Joel, thanks so much for coming in and coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to share the studio with you, lad, and it's been a fantastic podcast. Thank, Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Nice one. Very much, brother. Thank you.